All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Muckluck Streams. I'm your charming, self-proclaimed, yet still humble host, Muckluck. Today, we are back in the wonderful world of Guild Wars 2, because it's Guild Wars Tuesday. That's right. I am on the EU servers right now, uh, and we, I believe we have a patch today. Uh, yeah, the March 19th balance patch is going to be later today. So probably two-ish hours until then, if they stay on their normal schedule. We will see if they line up with that. They never say exactly what time they're going to do it, because that way it gives them the freedom to be a few minutes early or late. Uh, but yeah, uh, they, man, I, I, I definitely need a refresher on what's going to be in that patch, so looking forward to the notes. I know that uh, Renegade was getting, because one of the reasons I haven't tested Heal Renegade yet was because they were making a bunch of changes to it today. So once I see, you know, those changes, I can uh, try that out. Hey, oh, hey, Fippy, how you doing? Hope you're doing good. Hope everyone's doing good. We had a fun stream last night. We did Mutiny Monday yesterday. Uh, did the Rift Breaker. Someone challenged me to try to do, uh, beat it while people were attacking me in chat with only uh, one thin wall around the base. I usually do like triple layered walls. And I did it. I managed to do it. And then after that, we played some Helldivers 2. Spread some democracy. Had one game crash at the very end, which is unfortunate. It was right when a mission ended, so we didn't get the rewards. It's the first time I've seen a game crash in that game in, um, according to Steam, 22 hours of gameplay. Is it Deadeye nerfed today? I don't remember. Are they nerfing Deadeye today? If so, I don't recall. If so, I don't recall. Uh, Shin says, I'm trying to craft a legendary. I don't understand how to farm spirit shards. Can you tell me how to do that effectively? So, when you're after your max level, if you're in an area where you already have the masteries, or the mastery bar is full... Anytime you get XP, it goes toward um, Spirit Shards. It's like every time the XP bar fills. So using anything that gives you bonus XP, like boosters or the buff from Guild Halls, things like that, and then just earning XP. Um, for example, uh, the Octovine meta happens every two hours. I used to like to do that every day. And it gives like over half a bar of XP with a booster. So, like, every other time I would do it, I would get Spirit Shards. Um, but yeah, metas give a lot of XP. So, if you've, if you've got any that you like, you know, that works. And just, you know, do those regularly. Tome of, yeah, Tome of Knowledge, if you have some. Um, it depends on the gameplay you do. Like, if you only ever PvE, you might have no Tomes. But if you PvP a lot, you might have hundreds of them. A Tome of Knowledge, if you consume it on a character, it adds a level to the character. But if the character's max level, it gives you a spirit shard. Um, mm, 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 mm. Treasure mushrooms give spirit shards? Do they? If so, I did not know that. As someone just starting End of Dragons, how difficult are Gen 3 legendaries to craft? Is it worth it over Gen 1? They're not difficult. They just take time doing different activities. Like Gen 1, you have to get world map completion in the core game. Gen 3, you've got a new map completion in uh, End of Dragons, and you have to get different materials. Like, for example, Gen 3 requires a stack of uh, antique summoning stones, uh, and Gen 1 does not. But those are tradable, so you can, you know, buy them on the trading post from other people if you don't want to farm those, if you really want a Gen 3. So, honestly, it's just another option. <laughs> Excuse me, had the sniffles this morning. Uh, killing the Oni of the EOD zones gives about half of our XP if you are max on mastery. Is today patch day? Yes, D&D. It is patch day. Uh, probably going to be notes up in the next hour or two, and then we can go over those. Gen 3 requires 2,500 favor, 3,500 if you craft the precursor. Muck, are you going to do an I Tried series for Boon DPS classes? Maybe. I might be game for that. Morning, all. Good morning, Corwin. How you doing? I would say Boon DPS classes is going to be a whole lot easier than the heal builds. Because those is literally keep one boon up and then unga bunga. Hey, Muck. Thanks to your Get to the Point raid guides. I got into raids a few months ago and I got my coalescence ring and invoid none. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Another satisfied customer. Happy to hear that. Uh, I'm glad that they are still helping people out. 
Gen 3 can be done faster, you have a lot of money. Gen 1, you need time to complete the exploration regardless. True. Power, lock, and back. Press rifle 2, 30k DPS. I mean, there's some exceptions. Like, if you were doing DPS uh, Quick Herald, you would still want to learn how to bring, like, the projectile block on a fight if you ended up in charge of that, for example. Like, if you were doing Harvest Temple. Uh, or the stability on demand. Stink things like that. How do you want it all? Hi, Mally Sim. Mesmer Rifle takes forever to get the achievement for kills for the Abomination box. The Abomin... What is the Abomination box? Is that the, like, get 1,000 kills thing? Hello, Muck Douglas. Hey, Tokizo. I forgot we had a portal in this guild hall. Someone made a portal from the spawn end to here, but I keep walking over here before I remember we have that. What's the Blish add-on called for the fancy zone names? Uh, hang on. Uh, regions of Tyria, I'm pretty sure. Have a nice day. Hi, Yuru. You have the 1k kills? Gotcha. Yeah, Mesa Rifle's a support weapon, not really made for killing. So, I'm not surprised by that comment. Well, 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 look who it is, Muckluck, if that is your real name. I mean, not legally. What's up, DJ? Redeem Muckmail. Uh, uh, hold on, that reminds me of two things. One, I'll turn the redeems on. And two, wait, hold on. Which bot? Oh, I'm logged into the YouTube chat bot. That one is not what I'm looking for right now. And me, 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 me. All right, there we go. Done. All right, secondly, let's see. Wizards of all crap. And it doesn't work. What's new? Try it again. Okay. And what's this? Uh, thank you for your visit. Helping a lot to go through strikes. Uh. Someone sent me a nice letter. Guild invites. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Hello from your favorite dev here. Hello, Snake. What up? You say that, but Warrior Staff is also a support weapon. You could easily get kills with it. Um. Touche. Yeah, you got me there. I would oh, just hey say there, the beauty. damage scaling of the warrior staff and like the druid mace are very different from like the mesmer rifle. Good morning, Muck and Mugs Beer. Good morning, Sith. Sorry, hang on. Sorry guys, just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. Had a uh, sneezing fit. I did not want you guys to have to listen One to that. One day he will do his dad sneeze live without hiding behind ramen. Live. His dad sneeze live. Uh, no, I, I just I had to blow my nose for like the third or fourth time this morning. I don't know if I'm coming down with something. 
Um, I don't have any known allergies. Just started happening. Used to hate the Amnitus meta, but after 24 of them, it's starting to grow on me. 24 of them! Oh my god. I, uh, I've done the Amnitus meta, like, maybe five times. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of it. And it's mainly because I don't think the sky scale combat feels good. And I also don't like seeing 400 sky scales right in my face. And Amnitus meta is both of those things. Sneeze ASMR is for OnlyFans subs. <laughs> no. No one wants that. I just woke up with the sniffles this morning, sorry. You need to do 24 of them? Why? Do, why? Why do you need to do 24 of them? Is it for, like, legendary... Uh, legendary stuff? Because I, I did, like, four or five. Remember that you can take the zone currency and trade it for the, uh, like, case of captured lightning and stuff like that. Pollen outside is trying to kill us. My car is yellow, normally black. I don't even... I'm not, like, allergic to pollen or anything. Unless I'm becoming allergic, which is possible. My grandfather gained some new allergies when he was, like... I don't know, 50 or 60. I'm not there yet. But maybe, uh... Maybe I'm cooking up something new here. I don't know. Um... Let's see... How do you do... Yeah, I did. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, that's when it physiologically starts breaking your brain. Oh, okay. What's easier between heal Chrono and heal Druid? Um, both are about the same to play. Like, heal Chrono... Honestly, like, when I tested it, I started with Scepter Shield, and then I swapped to Rifle, and never swapped back to Scepter Shield in a fight. It was just for the opener. And I, some people told me you could also use Staff instead. And Druid, you... At this point, you know, Mace Warhorn is so good, you don't have to swap to Staff unless there's, like, a emergency and Astral Forms on cooldown. But Druid, you do swap from Mace Warhorn to Astral Form back and forth very often, because you have to for Alacrity uptime. Um, both of them have good utilities. You've um, got mail. I'd say the Chrono might be a tiny... Well, the Chrono has the Shatters to deal with. So Chrono has to deal with Shatters, and then Druid has to deal with the Astral Form stuff. I'd say those are about even. Um, Chrono... Probably... You know, Chrono has more access to, like, um, stability and uh, Aegis on demand, but the Ranger has better access to revive tools. So I would say the Ranger is better for pugging, but the Chrono is great anywhere. Morning, Mr. Monk. How are you this fine morning? Uh, possibly with a cold, but I'm happy to be here. Mentally, I'm great. Uh, let's see. Chat, I want to show you guys something I learned to, uh, learned uh, the other day. All right, hold on. Look, I just jumped off of that platform, right? I'm going to come down here. I'm going to open this. I'm going to dodge all this nonsense. Get the rewards. All right, now watch the two button. And then I rewound, okay? Now, one, the rewind is on cooldown for 25 seconds, right? I just jumped down again. Swap templates. Apparently, if you have a prototype position rewinder in hand, even if it's on cooldown, if you swap templates, it does the rewind. I learned that God, from a me, YouTube so comment angry. under one of my videos. So, like, I can jump, rewind, save spot. It's on cooldown for 25 seconds. Jump, swap templates, and it rewinds again. So, clearly unintended behavior, but there you go. I do not know why it does that. How do you get the rewinder? Uh, right there. No, wait, that's not it. That is not it at all. Hang on a second. Oh, it's exclamation jump. Never fail another jump puzzle again. Made that guide years ago. I had to remember what the command was. 
So yeah, if you've got any parked alts and you uh, ever spend some time just standing there and waiting, you could do that. That's cheating. I'll be reporting you, Mr. Muck. Yo, I saw a clip of a cheat that some people could do. I, okay, I, I should change. An abuse of unintended game mechanics for Saris challenge mode. Apparently, all right, so the way Saris CM works is he spawns ads from a player. So the player usually runs away from Saris and then spawns the ad. Then the ad walks towards Saris. If it reaches Saris, meaning you didn't kill it in time, it will give him five buffs. Each one gives him 5% more bonus damage. So Saris gets 25% bonus damage if the ad reaches him. However, some people found out if you just spawn the ad right next to them and then push the ad into Saris or pull the ad into Saris, the ad does despawn immediately, but it doesn't give him the buff. So I think like the next world first kill uh, was, you know, or the, the people attempting to do, uh, I, said, I said world first, I cannot talk this morning. The next group of people trying to get a kill on it uh, were attempting to do that a lot. And I was like, eh, I mean, that seems pretty obviously not what they intended. Well, uh, we'll see if Anet cares, or if they're just gonna let it happen and then fix it later. Uncle Muck works at Anet. <laughs> no, he's already seen the next fifty patches. Yep, and none of them fix things that I report. Mm. All right, so position, save. Is there patch notes up yet? If so, let me know, because I don't see him yet. Alright, rewind. d d for Dummy says, Is this point when you've played for decade plus, what do you do for fun? I've been playing for three years, so I'm still working on Legendary's achievements, and I uh, have to take breaks. Uh, I haven't played this for a decade plus. I did get this game when it came out, which is like ten years ago. And after that, uh, I played for like a month or so. I got to end game. I had fun, and then I got bored, and I stopped playing. And then after that, I uh, did other things. And five years ago, a friend told me like, "Hey, Guild Wars Two has added some stuff. I think you might like it." I tried it again, and then I got hooked on it. So I have played this. Uh, you know, I, I would say at that point. So five years ago, I, I came back to the game, and then I played it, like, every single day for a few years, and then kind of did everything. And then, like, a year or so ago, I hit burnout, and then I started streaming it once a week instead of uh, once a day. Um, and that, that worked out pretty well for me. But as far as what do I do for fun? I mean, yeah, I've got full legendary, like, pretty much everything at this point. I, I just basically, you know, hang out with the community, make videos, stuff like that. But it's going to depend on the individual. Uh, that one. No way doing this daily amounts to 10k gold. It does. Six days a week, I log in for 12 minutes, Sand. And on every Tuesday, I do giveaways, so... Like, the last time I did the thing where I turned all the built-up volatile magic I get from that um, routine into uh, money, the last time I did that, I gained 4,000 gold. So it's a massive jump in money whenever you cash out. What am I up to volatile-wise at this point? I'm back up to almost 300k. What's that mod with location stuff? Uh, it's in Bullish HUD. It's called Regions of Tyria. Uh, on that note, there was someone... Let's see. Thank you. This was sent for a giveaway. So, going to put this into the giveaway vaults. Next to the butter. There we go. Mug, can I rewind time to when you made Coalescence? Mystic Tribute was much cheaper back then. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, game economy changes a lot. 
You want to see something really crazy? Look at the video from when I made, I think, Conflux, and look at the price of Memories of Battle in that video. They've gone up a lot since then. <coughs> Maybe clarify it's 10 gold in materials rather than actual gold. It's pretty clear in the videos what, what it is. I show all the mats. Uh, let's see. Speaking of materials, do I have any that are overflowing right now? We get some of virtually every material in the game almost doing that routine. So as they fill up, I'll sell a few stacks. Uh, Sam says I'm not disciplined enough to do that routine. I don't even follow meds with such dedication. That's fine. There are some people that find it easier to put on some music and go run Silver Waste for five hours. There are some people that find it easier to fish in game for any period of time. I can't stand those things. But this, you know, this few minutes a day, this is easy to me. I can do something small, you know, many, many days in a row, rather than do something that takes a lot of time one day. That's just how it works for me. Oop. Let's see. Silver ore. Gossamer, two and a half gold each. And cotton. Surprised you don't have Reaper Glyph for the home instance run? So Reaper Glyph allows you to AoE farm stuff, but you don't get anything extra. Volatile Magic Glyph, you don't AoE farm, but you get a lot of additional money. So, like, if you were running through a home instance with Reaper Glyph, and I was running through with the Volatile Glyph, you would finish first, and I would uh, take another minute to finish, but I would get way more money than you did. That's why. The only place in the game I would consider using the Reaper Glyph is if I had an alt parked at that set of, um, it's in... Or there's a spot that's got like seven elderwood trees that respawn once an hour. If I would like, if I was gonna log in, cut those trees down, log out like periodically on an alt, I would use the Reaper Glyph there. There's nowhere else in the game I would use it. But that's that's just me. I'll take an extra few seconds to clear the home instance in return for getting like many times the cash. The spot of Malcor's Leap? Yeah. Most of gold for each of these. Also, good morning, Muck. How's the fam? Hey, Mizuo. Fam's doing good. Boys at school, wife's upstairs doing something. Uh, let's see, Flax Farm. Flax Farm, okay, so with a Molten Harvesting sick uh, Sickle, you farm gathered stuff, like not the ch chop stuff, not the mining stuff, but gathered stuff, like four times faster. So those also, I would rather have Volatile because it's so quick to get those up. Um, but farming a bunch of trees or a bunch of ore, I would consider the Reaper thing. I guess patch notes will be at 12. We'll see. Uh, usually they're in the next hour and a half if they keep with their normal schedule. Uh, 
Uh, got 200 in the delivery box. There we go. Okay. Can you use Reaper Glyph on winter berries? I've never tested. I'm not sure. Hey, my chat. Hey, Necros. Aeon says, yes, you can. Uh, let's see. Mark, I just had a thought. Do you think they'd add in new trait lines as an update? Um, it's possible. Like, through elite specializations, they've done that in the past. But as far as adding new, like, baseline ones, I don't know. I feel like that would be a big thing. That would be, like, a feature, like, an expansion feature. Did you test all the weapons? Uh, I've tested... I've been testing ones related to support. So, uh... Excuse me, Sniffles. Um, so, for example, uh, Support Scourge can use the new sword. Uh, staff, uh, or sorry, Mace Druid, uh, Mace Untamed, uh, Staff Warrior, Rifle, Mesmer, stuff like that. Muck, will you ever go back to do Mace Mechanist? Um, I've already recorded a video on Mechanist. It's in Noxie's inbox right now. Uh, I love JF there. Expansion, gonna have new trait lines to watch. Maybe. Uh, on that note, for through my experimentation with all the different supports in the game, there's three I haven't tried. Renegade, which I purposefully was waiting on because it gets reworked today. Mirage and Kato, which I've been stalling on because they look like a pain in the butt to play, and also they seem like a meme. Like, <laughs> they don't even really seem that good. But... Uh, those are the last ones. Mace Mace Untamed is fun. I was doing support, so I was Mace Warhorn Staff Untamed. Do you have a good heal druid build? Yeah, I mean, it's, I've cleared all the content with it. Other than a couple of the challenge modes. Uh, okay. Is Scourge video in the pipeline? I'll look through your videos, haven't seen one. If you mean, like, a recent review of Scourge, uh, I think it's actually in my inbox from my editor this morning, which means I might have it out tomorrow or the next day. Hang on, let me double check. What is this file name? Ma, come look. I can heal with this weird coarse and rough sand that goes everywhere. Dot MP4. Okay, that has to be the Scourge video for Noxie. Yeah, so I guess I've got the Scourge video. Uh, well, this character's already in the Aerodrome. Uh, uh, I guess it's Catalyst. Your highest quality is 720p by 60. That's different than usual. Wait, what? Usually when people watch me, they're able to watch in 1080. Chat, what resolution can you watch me at right now? What is the highest setting you have for you? Ten eighty, ten eighty, seven twenty, seven twenty, ten eighty. Weird. Okay. Well, there's definitely some inconsistency there. I don't know what's going on. 8K virtual reality. Oh my gosh. It's like... You can feel when I sneeze. <laughs> Ew! Oh, man, I'm dreading this. Alright. I'm actually dreading this. Okay, let's see. Is there already a guide on this? Builds Elementalist. There is no heal catalyst on Snow Crows. There is not a heal catalyst on Snow Crows. <sighs> Guild gym. If I can't if I can't find it, I don't have to do it. Maybe under legacy. DPS catalyst Zerg build. Scepter catalyst PvP. Scepter catalyst Wolvie World Roaming. 
Staff Kata Open World, Hammer Kata Roaming, Quickness Sword Hammer Kata. How are you supposed to heal from downstate anyway? Encouraging words. Uh, not really seeing one here either. There's one on Meta Battle. Anyone can upload to Meta Battle. You can have any build there. That's why that's the last place I go. Let's see, hard stuck. Uh, Power Cat is the only thing for group PVE. Oh, God. Alright, hang on. I have not been on here in a while. Boon support healer kata. Mm. Uh. Alright, hold on. What do the comments say? Can provide a lot of boons, but let's hope your team plays at their very best every time you leave water attunement. Almost all catalyst healing comes from water. If you need a reactive healing while out of water, the only good choice is water signet. Uh, crashing wave isn't reliable reactive heal because it needs to be targeted at an enemy, only heals around them, and is subject to slow pet AI response times. Really, the only reason to play it is if you need your boon healer well off the stack. Heal catalyst can provide all of its boons and healing from long range. Hiding on Sabatha or Doom or tanking monsters on Q1 or tanking QTP are the only reason it's a 4th star. This is pre-relics. Yeah, I, yeah, so this is an old, this is old. Pros, not firebrand. Cons, not firebrand. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Meta Battle rates the builds, and all four or five are better are viable. This has a single four star from one person, and it's for Kadeem, and it's out of date. Oh my gosh. God, this sounds awful. Hold on. I'm looking at stuff. Do full base shout heal warrior then? I've already done two videos on warrior recently. I'm not about to play piano. Uh, do I even have catalyst unlocked? Nope. No, I don't. Uh, let me see. What was the other the other one I haven't done? Support Mirage. <laughs> Hang on. Tap, tap, tap. I heard you complain about my file names. Every chance I get. He has not one on Snow Crows. Alright, hang on. Uh Guild Gen. Mirage. Overwhelming. Let's see. Roaming, open world, roaming, open world, DPS, power block, ambush, mirage, PvP, 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 roaming, roaming. Not one here either, okay? Maybe, maybe these are so meme, people don't even have them on any of the main websites. Uh, Mesmer, Raid and Strike. Condi DPS or a lack support Condi DPS. Yeah. So Gilgen, Snow Crows, and even Meta Battle do not have a heal heal mirage. Why is my alert silent? What? I just heard Noxie's alert, so I know the bot's working. Did you did did you did you uh, un unsupport Asen? Didn't you do a vid on an Ellie build for support? I did Tempest. Yeah. The gift sub, you goober. Wait, what?
His works. Have a nice stream, Muck Cluck. Did you say something naughty? Uh... I don't know. Hang on. Let me redo Asen's alert. There. Asen corrects gifted six months of tier one to Noxxi underscore Grenrose. <laughs> Grin They've gifted Rose. 343 you, months Rose. in the channel. Welcome. Muggler Duck was about to be original desk by the fourth. This is Johnson Van Silva's the third one. Because you and yours back to the lab. We'll be joining our staying entertainment's on the way. Crank at the speakers. Touch the speakers. Giveaways every week. Please take a seat. But you'll only need the edge. Mmm. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. No new Necros vids. I just got a, a vid from Noxy about Scourge. I'll, it'll be up soon. All right. So, man, I'm so considering just not doing this. All right. Support Mirage and support Catalyst. I was warned ahead of time these are kind of mean. Uh, however, Mirage, I don't even see a guide for it on any of the usual sites. Catalyst, there is one guide on Meta Battle with one rating from one guy, and it's out of date. And the rating basically says works on two fights in the game. Um, it seems like the main problem with this is that in Tempest, for example, Tempest, you pump out a lot of, you go to fire to pump boons, you go to earth to pump boons, you go to water to pump healing and boons, and you repeat. But if something bad happens and you're not in water, you can use the, the ability wash the pain away, which is a Tempest skill as a heal until you get back into water to fix the problem. Catalyst doesn't have wash the pain away. So Catalyst, if your group's in trouble and you're not in water, they're in big trouble. So... Yeah, it's more of a problem. So, man. I gotta, I'm gonna be honest. I, I, I'm looking for any excuse to not do this. And uh, this seems like a really good one. With Caracosa Relic, comboing anywhere gives healing. <sighs> Yeah, do, okay, the last time I played a build that was reliant on that, like, there, there's builds where Caracosa Relic is nice. Builds where it's reliant on that is, like, Healbender, which is awful. Like, I could not, ba I could barely heal through the mid-damage Agony Field on Healbender, much less the extreme one until I swapped to tank gear like Givers. Um... And a water a water blast combo heals for like I don't know a thousand plus. It's nice to have, but I wouldn't want that to be the only thing. Also, that would be really bad when you're like moving around the room and stuff. I got an excuse for you, Muck. Play support renegade in two hours. That's an excellent excuse. Uh, Mirage is easy. Distort one on one. Distort one on one. Weapon swap one one one. That's it. <laughs> that that does healing somehow. I know that does the ambushes. You spray people with love with heal mirage. Oh yeah, the gun ambush is like a water gun or something. Uh... Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm not gonna do it. Muck you, Catalyst. You're stupid. Honestly, not stupid, but very intimidating. I find you very intimidating and I don't want to play that. I think there's a, there's a reason it's not on, like, any sites uh, anywhere. No, boo. <laughs> boo you! I would, dude, I would, I don't even have it trained. I'm gonna have to run around and get hero points and crap like that. And it's like, why do all that work for something I don't want to do? I do not want to do any of that. Renegade sounds fun. Uh, I, I, I will wait on Renegade. That's fair, Catalyst is mega meme. Dude, it looks awful. It looks awful. Uh, can I have your druid build link? Uh, yeah, you can have it. Hang on. Where is... Gosh, what is the... Uh... That's it. I will tell you, a lot of folks prefer to use marksmanship instead of skirmishing, and that is also fine. It's a, it just has a few different strengths and weaknesses. 
The tab mock number two? Yeah, I don't need that much. Uh, I was looking forward to seeing you on Heal Kata. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the fact that in the entire community across the three top build sites, there's one post about it by one guy with one vote, uh, kind of tells me what I need to know. What relic would you use on your arrow cart world v world build? Anything that improves damage. The whole point of the arrow cart is you stay miles away and shoot from a safe distance. It's so like runes, you know, scholar, fireworks, like anything like that. Do heal mech with a mace? I already did the other day. The video will be out soon. Actually, Lloyd, didn't I tell you that like 10 minutes ago? Yeah, I did. You asked about that like 10 minutes ago and I answered you then. Ah. Uh. Hmm. I was thinking... Alright. I know something else we can do, content creation. I know something else we can do, chat. I'm gonna need to make a thumbnail for when I tried Scourge. Alright, here's my thought. Here's my thought already. Anakin Skywalker. Screeching. Okay, you know how he is. Alright. And then over to the side is Dale from... Um, King of the Hill, and he's throwing pocket sand right into Anakin's face. And Anakin has green healing numbers on him, but he's like crying. That's that's the that's the idea. Gets everywhere? Yes. I wish all pets tamed were account bound. Uh taming pet over and over is annoying. Um I mean how many rangers do you have? Uh, hello, maybe frequently asked question. Do you have a video about what add-ons you use? Uh, yeah, Xbox, uh, Exploration add-ons. That right there is a web page about add-ons. Oh, this was, <laughs> what do you guys think of this? I needed a thumbnail for Heal Mace Untamed, and I googled mace memes, and I found a helicopter with a mace. And then, ten minutes later, I had done this. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was, I was like, okay. So, I have a farting helicopter, healing, and then there's a very tidy scrapper and berserker there. Drop dusting? Yes. Pets are not- no, pets are not account bound. It's- it's character bound. Add Bully Maguire for good measure. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. <laughs> I don't know if all that's gonna fit. We'll see. Alright, uh... Let's see... Delete that. Delete that. Hide the untamed logo. Uh, let's see. Hide the text. Uh, hide the numbers. Okay. Alright, so... Anakin Skywalker crying. What? <laughs> Where's the one of him, like, screeching? Oh, this might work. I found this one. <laughs> there we go. Mug, please check the message I linked. What? Hang on. Pocket saying no. Uh, we could do better than that. Thumbnail's unrealistic. Who plays DPS Scrapper? I have no idea. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Anakin... I hate you is apparently what he was screaming. Oh, that's some nice high resolution. Alright, that's gonna be the background. There we go. Perfect. All right, so just going to move this over here. Might have to move it even more. We'll see. Okay. Uh, pocket sand, green background. Let's see if anyone has it already cut out. Bro, what? <laughs> Look what came up. <laughs> All right. 
That exists. Uh, what else do we got? Okay. Shoot, I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna have to cut this out. Hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Alright, let's see. New layer. We're, we're gonna have to work with this here. Alright, so here's Dale doing the pocket sand. How do we combine the two of these? I could just keep this. Hmm. Alright, options. I could just keep this and cut out Anakin's head and then put it on this guy's shoulders, just backwards. <laughs> Or I could cut out Dale, which would take a lot longer, and then put Dale like over here. Mirror his head. Hang on a sec. I see final new. Oh god, why does it default to that? Lord, whatever. Alright. Alright, copy this over to here. And then flip. Where is it? Image. Flip horizontally. <laughs> it looks so stupid. All right. Where's the lasso? Uh. Oh. Uh. Anchor it. There we go. Mm. People tuning into the Guild Wars 2 section, they just see this guy screeching on my screen. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, it's Guild Wars 2, obviously. Pay attention. Alright. And then... Let's do that. What? Oh. Uh... Copy. Paste. There we go. <laughs> art. It's clearly art. Now I need to put some healing numbers on him. There we go. Alright. Now I've got some healing numbers I use for all of these, so I just need to move these around. There we go. Is this Scourge? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, what video is the thumbnail for? Uh, it's a video where I try out Scourge and I share my thoughts on it. I haven't even watched the video yet to see if uh, how the editing was. I'll do that later. But just gotta prepare a thumbnail right now. Make some numbers uh, yellow for barrier. Mmm, crap. That's a good idea. Uh, let's see. Eh. There we go. <laughs> uh, Alright, we need a Scourge icon on Dale. Let's see, where is my icons? Guild Wars 2 class logos. Do I have a Scourge one in here? I do! Do I just cover his whole face? No, I think his face is necessary. You can't just cover Dale's face. Do you like that? Did I just see a Josh Drive Haze layer? Yeah, I did a video with him once. 
Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was the, uh... Hold on, search videos for Josh. Here we go. I played EverQuest for 100 hours, should you? I asked him if I could do a scummy react to his video, and he said yes, and then I talked about EverQuest for two hours. Healing number turned yellow. That was on purpose. That's because barrier is yellow. And Scourge loves barrier. Scourge icon eyes. Oh, God. Scourge icon eyes? Okay, hang on a second. All right, let's duplicate layer. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> what are you making me do? There you go. <laughs> uh, can you make the faces in the background the Scourge shade face? <laughs> oh no! Uh, Guild Wars 2 Scourge shade. Uh, oh man, that's gonna be tough to cut that out. Where's a picture of Zordon? I'll just do that and make it yellow. Zordon. Here we go. We'll just do a yellow Zordon. Alright, copy this. Uh, hang on, new layer. Alright, I'm gonna have to do some work on Zordon here. Alright, so... Deletes. And then... How do I get it to deselect? There we go. Alright. How do I... <laughs> How do I make it, like, yellow tint? <laughs> I don't know how to make it, like, yellow tint. Uh... Alright, first off. <laughs> looks like such a creep. Alright. Hold on, I, I'm not done with these. I'm gonna do some work on them. Spending more time on this than on the actual video. Okay. All right, one sec. All right, we gotta erase some of the extra stuff. Is that the eraser? Yeah, oh my gosh. It's too much. Uh, all right. Is that one? Is that one? Oh, yeah. oh, I can't find a picture of a shade. I'll just use a Power Ranger. That's fine. Ah, that last bit looks dumb. Well, you know I'm doing this with a mouse. I don't have a tablet. All right. <laughs> uh, hue saturation setting. Transport yellow film on top. <sighs> Dude, there's so many things in this that are not going to be appreciated by people when I post this video. They're not going to see Zordon. This is just for you guys. All right. Uh, hue saturation. Where is that at? I've never done that. Done that. Uh. All right. Hold on a sec. Let me try this. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna try something here. Where is... Is this the paintbrush? Alright, so there's that. And then opacity. Wait, I think we can work with this. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Now it needs some text. Alright. This is the previous one. So I need to mess with this. Oh. Uh, just, oh my god. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Uh, so be like. Oh, the text needs to do that. Alright. I tried heal scourge. Hmm, should I include the fact that I used the sword? I tried sword heal scourge. That might be a selling point. Some people might click it just because they're like, wait, sword? What the hell? What's going on in here? And then make the word scourge bigger. Hmm. Something like that. Per, per tradition, hi to Dennis. I'll see what I can do. Alright, let's see. Select, grow, like 13 pixels. Alright, do that. I've been having a lot of fun with these stupid thumbnails lately. <laughs> Hide him in Anakin's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> In Anakin's mouth? Alright. Hang on. Okay. Alright. First of all, I gotta save all our progress so far. Tiny swords on his fingertips. I'm not doing tiny swords on his fingertips. Uh, okay. Wizard Dennis. Do you want an image of a sand shade for comparison? I found some. Like, when I when I googled it. it was, that, that's why I looked at this. I was like, God, cutting this out would be so awful. I have Dale holding a Guild Wars 2 sword in his hand. No, because then it would go that way, and then it would block the sand. You could barely see the sand as it is. Uh, okay. A wizard Dennis, someone requested. One sec, I have to find the file. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, wait. I don't have to- Oh, he's, st he's still here. He's still a layer. All right, someone said in his mouth. <laughs> the littlest Easter egg. There we go. There we go. He, uh, he lost some pixels shrinking down that much. Jazz up the sand with sparkles. I don't know how to do that. I think everyone's gonna recognize Pocket Saiyan. I think that's fine. <sighs> Freaking yellow Zordons. No! The program's too much. Uh, Alright. Let's see. Two months. What did I miss for the last hour today? Just art. <laughs> Just art. Uh, 
It's an eternal meme, of course they'll recognize it. They better. You should cross the necks of the blue face you saw the bodies. Zordal looks like he's uh, doing a really bad quality video call on his phone, I've just realized. <laughs> Uh, nice beard. Thank you, Anwar. Alright. I think this is done. So now, after stream, uh, I just need to watch the video that Nox sent me and make sure it's okay. And then, uh, after that, I will... Just need to do the Renegade. If, I, if I'm just gonna bail on the Mesmer, those, what was it, Mirage and Catalyst, then I just need to try the Renegade out after the rework, uh, which is today, and possibly Patch Notes video, if there's that today. You missed a farm animal. I wasn't reminded in time. It's too late now. <sighs> I see where we're getting new Guild Wars 2 content because you're streaming, obviously. I, yeah, that's the only time. That, that's the only time you see me playing Guild Wars 2. <laughs> obviously. Heal Deadeye. I've never heard of that. You're making that up. Hmm. Hmm. Have Renegade be a Rage Against the Machine band image? Is there patch not today? There is supposed to be a patch. Patch time is usually about an hour from now. Heal Engineer win. I've already done uh, the recording for that. Here, hold on a sec. Okay. So, recently, recently, one second here, I'm opening up, uh, search for the word tried. I did videos on Untamed, Spectre, Druid, Willbender, Firebrand, Tempest, Herald, Chronomancer, Bladesworn, and Berserker. In addition to that, I have already sent Noxie the recording of me trying, where is it? Heal mech. Heal scourge. Heal into okay. Heal scourge. Heal mech. Uh, where's the scrapper one? Heal weaver. No. Wait. One sec. Did I forget to put it in Noxie's queue? Heal Untamed. I know I did. Yo, the short bow was so awful. I know I did it. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it might, might have been good that we checked this. Might have been good that we checked this. One sec. When did I do this? All right, search, pass, broadcast. Uh, when did I do? Trying bow scrapper than ranching slimes. March 10th. Okay. All right. Search highlights. I ranched slimes that day. All right. One second. Uh, let's put this away. We don't need this here right now. So it would have been around March 10th. One sec. Um, this is for Soto? Yeah, I just did this the other day. Huh. So what day... Okay, what day did I send the mech in this one? Did I do Scrapper before mech? I sent them on the 13th. Yeah, I did. Okay. Alright, so I'm glad you brought this up. Because uh, apparently I neglected to tell Nox to do this one. Alright, one sec. Alright, highlight. Okay. So, I think... Whoops. Should have been on this one. I'll fight you there. Okay. Okay, was that it? Is this it? Alright, hello YouTube! I'm Michael here, and today I tested... Oh, uh, the short bow scrapper. Oh my gosh, the short bow... Alright, there we go. Alright. 
All right, there's that. Cut that footage. All right. Ba -ba. Uh, that. And then pass broadcast. Where was it? Here. That one. All right, cut that out. Uh, please do this one before Mechanus. Looks like I forgot to send it to you. All right, there we go. Because the thing is, in the Mechanus video, I've probably referenced the Scrapper video many times. So if they don't release in the right order, it's going to be weird. All right. All right, so anyway, uh, Scrapper and Mechanus are on the way. The Scourge one is on the way. Uh, was that it? Is that all of them? Untamed came out today. Scourge should be out in the next day or two. Hold on. Now I gotta double check these. Done, 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 done this morning. In queue, in queue, done. Just got back the file. Done. Yeah, okay, we're good. We're good now. Scrapper was the only one that, like, fell between the floorboards. Alright, so then it's just Mirage and Kata, muck those, <laughs> and then Renegade. And then I could even do, I don't, I don't think a tier list is the right word, but I could do a video where I go over my thoughts on, like, all of them after trying all of them. It's, it's basically going to be like, these are all great and valid, don't play Spectre. <laughs> That's going to be the video. These are all wonderful choices, they are all viable, they all work, don't play Spectre. Scrapper almost got scrapped. Yeah. The Scrapper worked. The The Scrapper Shortbow healing output was good. Like, I was able to heal through Extreme Fields, which is something, uh, you know, with the Scrapper Shortbow. But the Mace Shield feels so much better on it. And honestly, one of the biggest issues with Scrapper is... Um, let me give you guys an example. Let's say I want to give Prot on a Druid. Basically, I can give Prot with Verdant Etching by using a Glyph. I can give Prot with Stone Spirit. I can give Prot with Invigorating Bond. I can give Prot with Mace 3. I got four tools to give Prot. Pick like two of those and do them every time they pop up and you'll be fine. You've got some options, right? If I want to give protection on a Scourge, you just use your shade every time it pops up. That's it. It really doesn't change the gameplay at all. Just keep hitting that button. That's full pr protection. Scrapper... Your self-heal gives prot, your shield skills give prot if you're not using short bow, and your revive other people function gyro gives prot. So, you choose. Do you want to give up your self-heal, your function your revive, or your uh interrupts and blocks? Pick two. You have to give up two of them. That's your protection uptime. It feels awful because you make great sacrifice to keep protection up on a scrapper, but you don't with most other healers. So that's that's the main annoying thing with scrapper. The rest of it's all right. Uh, literally, the only use for uh, Ng Shortbow is solo as a mechanist. Yeah, open world, it, it can you can like fight, fight some big bosses and stuff like that. Uh, hello everyone. Are the patch notes for today already online, and where can I find them? Uh, blabber, not that I know of. If they are, no one sent them to me yet. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why Elixir R is bad? On paper, it's a good revive skill, 100% revive rate, but no invuln or pull. Let me take a look at it. Um, a few things to keep in mind. With Engineer, there's also the tool belt. So what you get from what's on your bar is combined with what you get on the tool belt. And so what you give up is another skill plus that skill's tool belt. But hang on. All right, so let's see. This is Mechanist. Uh, where is Support Scrapper? All right, so this is a basic Support Scrapper. Okay, so Elixir R. That is where you at, right there. So the main skill refills your endurance. In PvE, you are not going to care about this. 
The F2, or F whatever, is throw it at a location and revive allies. Um, it's a 90 second cooldown. All right, so one, it's not instant, which means that if they are in something damaging them, like let's say they're in a patch of fire, if you throw this on them, what can happen is their health bar just does this. And then after 10 seconds, the elixir R wears off and then it goes down and they die. So that's one situation where it's bad. Situation two, it's a 90 second cooldown. Function gyro is a 25 second cooldown and it revives them until they're up. So Function Gyro also uh, hits three people, but Function Gyro is a better version of this with one-third of the cooldown, and it doesn't take up a utility slot. In terms of Scrapper, Elixir Gun offers a lot of cleansing and healing. It offers regeneration uptime with the tool belt. Blast Gyro offers a lot of your might stacks, as well as a CC and a fire field. Uh, and Boar Gyro is barrier for the group and also your only form of giving stability on the group. Giving up any of those hurts. Giving up any of those for a second revive skill that's worse than the one you already have is kind of silly. Same question on support mechanist. They don't have a tool belt, so Elixir R doesn't revive. That's it. Mechanist can't use it. Scrapper can, but it's worse than what they've already got. Like, in the one cooldown of Elixir R, they could use Function Gyro three times. And they have to give up something. They have to give up stability, or they have to give up a lot of cleansing and healing ability, as well as regen up time, or they give up a lot of might, might generation. They have to give up one of those things to get a second lackluster revive. Didn't know Mechanist can't use it. Yeah, the Mechanist trades their tool belt for a giant robot. Function Gyro has a longer cooldown depending on how many targets it tries to revive. Uh, true. Well, actually, didn't they rework that? No, no hold on. I'm thinking of something else. There was a... Um, yeah, Ex Machina. Sorry, I was thinking of this trait. If you have this trait, it no longer increases in um, cooldown time if it gets a bunch of people. Uh, however, you're not going to be running that trait if you're in charge of quickness because it competes with quickness. This one's really fun in PvP, though. Because you get uh you get double gyros, so this one's really fun. Because like you can you can be like revive those guys, and then one second later revive those guys. It's really fun in PvP, but yeah, can't you can't use that in PvE because you're not providing quickness if you do. Yep 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 yep. Could you please use F12 to change characters, making me crazy? If I wanted to make you crazy, I would. Just identify a whole bunch of stuff, and then just go AFK. <laughs> just leave those bags completely full. All over the screen. Is there a keyboard shortcut for build quick change panel? That little arrow is tiny. Uh, well, you can just right click on swap weapons. You don't click on the build thing, you just right click on this. So you just like right click, left click, left click. Right click, left click, left click. Like that. That's how I usually do it. Yeah, it's way easier than like going here and changing a thing and then going here and changing a thing. You can hotkey swapping. Um, I've seen uh, like Valen, when he does a world v world, he'll be on, he might be playing a thief and he'll run away from someone and then go and viz and then like hit a hotkey and swap to a build that's better at fighting that person and then turn around and fight them. Uh, I think I'd like to, them to do a utility skill set per class rather than new weapons next time to fill some of these holes. That would be cool. Any thoughts on making a guide for all your guides? Uh, that would be this. And there you have it. Uh... All right. 
Okay, at this point, I think I just need to chew up some time until the possible patch comes out. Uh, I meant to have a chuckle or meme short, not because of an ad break. <laughs> that wasn't an ad break, that was the guide to the guides. Hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at some stuff here. Hmm. Is even gluten free? It, I mean, there's no gluten to be found on that website. It is true. I found out yesterday I'm Evan Nashblade. Unbelievable. <laughs> You're Evan Nashblade? Which PvE content has the highest healing pressure? Bone Skinner? Uh, of the easy fights, Bone Skinner has possibly the largest healing pressure. Um... And then there's also, uh, what else is there? Like, big raids, you know, like Doom, Kadim has some pressure spots. The the challenge mode stuff, obviously. You know, like, Sarah CM, like 30 people in the world have cleared. Veil Guardian, if you ignore grains, yeah. And honestly, Bone Skinner is also because we ignore mechanics. Like, there's multiple... There's multiple fights in the game that are much more difficult because the community decided it's easier to just ignore all the mechanics and just have the healer work harder. Bone Skinner, Veil Guardian, both examples of that. You type I am Evan Nashblade in the trading, but yeah, I'm familiar with it. Keeping relics. I need to do a guide. I haven't just, I've been making so many videos lately. At some point, I need to sit down and do a video guide on how to make the new legendary relics. And I'm keeping the mess of relics in my inventory until that because I want to have footage of that in the video. Um, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I just, the other day, finished the guide to legendary, all the new legendary armor, which was a ton of work. And then I've also been putting out a ton of these like little videos of me trying different things out. What's the pendant looking thing on your inventory second row, second column? This? Invitation to the party. Teleports you to any festival. <laughs> Daily strikes? I was thinking it, yeah. Alright, for anyone who might be interested. I'm just on my main character, I'm on my druid. If anyone would like, I am gonna do daily strike missions. So I would be, uh, I'm on EU, by the way. This is a healthcare strike. Let's see what we can get. Can't join since I'm NA. Yeah, I'll be back on NA later tonight. I need that pendant. I've been I've missed Winter's Day five years running. You've missed Winter's Day for five years. Uh let's see. I can be your heal kata. No. Uh a lack heal or quick heal. Uh do we have any a lack DPS or quick DPS? Why do you play on both EU and NA? Because there's people who want to play with me on both EU and NA. That's why. All right, Exorius is quick DPS. Put him here. Uh, let's see, Yui is a lack heal. And Mathhelm, if you could please be quick DPS. And then everyone else just DPS. Okay. Mm, let's see. Daily strikes. Cosmic Observatory. Oh boy. Mm. 
In Fractals, which role to play is to... Wait, what? In Fractals, which role to play is it to can learn them more easy? Probably... Okay, I'm guessing English is a second language here. Um, I'm trying to interpret what you're asking me. Um, if you're asking, like, what could you play to learn Fractals the easiest... I would say usually find a build that you can play well without thinking about it. And then you can focus on learning fractals without having to think about the character. Because, like, you can learn a fight or you can learn how to play your character. You can't learn both at the same time. So it, it just depends on what build you're the most comfortable with. What is my role? Uh... Eh? Mac, I think you're DPS. I can learn both at the same time. It won't be good, though. Lol. Am I quick DPS? I don't remember. Erza says yes. Axolotl says uh, two gifted subs. Thank you, Axolotl. Welcome. Mugla Duck goes about to be Reginald Esquire the fourth. This is Johnson Vassivals the third. Welcome to you and yours to the lab. Hope you enjoy your theme to theme on the way. Crank at the speaker. Start to speaker. Skip always every week. Please take a seat, but you'll only need the edge. Hmm. Welcome. All right, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You ready? Living. Allies aid. Something. Block the projectiles. Watch out for the uh, the puddle, the angry puddle.
Good CC, nice. I should probably let somebody else handle the spears. The two times I've run out to handle the spears, a lock fell off. It was not ideal. What build could solo bounties the easiest and fastest? Uh, for that kind of question, I would recommend Lord Heisen's YouTube channel. He almost exclusively uh, does videos about content that he soloed that should not have been soloable. Search and rescue. I'm just going to glyph on top of us to get everybody up. Ooh, I was glad I was on my druid there. Y'all gave me a few spicy moments. Alright, uh, let's see, what's the next one? Daily Strikes, Harvest Temple. Easy. <laughs> uh, which healer's easiest to learn and easiest or cheapest to gear? They're all about the same price to gear, and in fact most of them use the same set of, ge set of gear, which is Harrier's armor. Um, there are some exceptions though. Uh, as far as easiest to learn, um, what I'm about to give you is of course my own opinion on it. I, I, I want to be make you know, that very clear. I think... Bla uh, Herald, Firebrand, and Tempest are harder to learn than most of the others. Um, that said, they are all they're also very good. But also, other ones that are quite good are Druid, uh, Mechanist, Scrapper, Chrono. Those are all very good, but not as difficult to learn as the first three, in my opinion. But if you put in the time, you can learn any of them. Absolutely. New support tests on today? Maybe. Uh, Cross, the only ones I have left are Mirage and Kata, which I can't even find good build guides on. Like, they're so niche, I don't even think that they're like a real thing. Um, and then Renegade after the rework today. And the thing is, is, I don't main Renegade, so I can't just look at the rework and go, oh, with these changes, I should ba 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 I might have to wait for someone who mains Renegade to tell me how to play it after the change, and then I can, you know, try it out. But it's getting reworked in, like, 25 minutes, so there's that. Somebody redeemed a beard, so here's that. <laughs> Your favorite, you're forgetting your favorite Alak heal Spectre class. Oh yeah, uh, I don't recommend playing Spectre. <laughs> I did forget that. I enjoy Rifle Chrono. It's pretty good. Do you know if Ellie Hammer still loses orbs when picking up Fire Greatsword? I do not know. All right, two DPS north, south, east, and west. Kill the stuff coming out of the black blobs while the supports are pushing the big orb. If you are DPS, please do not help with pushing the orb. It's not needed. And you're, well, I, there's a great example of why I don't want your help. You're pushing it off course. You're not good at it. S search and rescue. Oh my god. Don't stand in the black orb. Get ready to CC. Okay. Wow, that was the <laughs> roughest phase one I've ever seen. 
All right. Revive that person, please. I'll leave it to you. Spread out, go boom, and then return. How did we lose someone? We're on the first part! If you don't have movement skills, run. That was crazy. We had someone go downstate in a puddle in the pre-phase, and then someone went off the cliff once the dragon spawned, and then someone else full died. So we had three downstates before the first dragon was dead. Burn, burn, burn. You guys can kill it. You have the damage. I don't even have enough astral power. There. I couldn't go back into astral form to keep Alacrity up in time. Doing glyph just for the stability. Kill the devourers. Alright. So, the rule at this point is go where the last laser was in order to uh, avoid the lasers. Come to tag. That's fine. Kill the ad and then worry about the uh, the little black slime ads. Once again, please leave the orb pushing to the supports. Got a downstate, save him if you can. Alright, death juice is in effect. Do not touch the death juice or it will kill you. Prepare to CC. Don't touch the death juice, it'll still kill you. Alright, remember this phase has the jump over three shockwaves thing? Run the booms out. Split up, jump three times. Where's the downstate? I said, whoa, you are over there in Alabama. All right, I'm pet rezzing, search and rescue's in effect. Split up. That was a recovery. <sighs> Run. 
Remember that these spit death juice, if you're melee, the moment you see it, dodge backward. Dodge roll the big circle. Alright, Salt Spray Dragon. Okay, DPS, go to the black spots and kill the slime ads that come out. There's a slime about to reach it. Okay. That was actually very close. Get ready to CC. Okay. Phase. Get ready to dodge Suwon's opening attack. My pet's rezzing him. Tail shock wave from behind us is the next thing. Turn your camera. Three down, help revive, help revive. I gave alacrity recently, so I can't AoE res. Alright, if the orb is moving away from you, stop hitting it. That is the rule here. If the orb is pushing away from you, stop hitting it. It's sloppy, but it's working. Keep keep doing what you're doing. Okay, revive others, revive others, and then meet at the dragon. Split up. Go. The <laughs> I totally had a glyph of the stars about to res Erza, but the lift you up in the air flashy finale thing stopped it, and that allowed Erza to die. Like literally the the you win crap at the end is what killed this person. I'm about yeah, to flavor Richard Greco.
Uh, all right. All right. Uh, Eye of the North. Welcome to Flavor Town. Is the only place you ki for curious coins the part chest you had in your 12 minute get rich video? I'm sure there's others. I just. I don't need more, so I only have one character parked at those. Okay. Eye of the North. How many hours do you have on your account at this point? Uh, slash age 8,600. More than many, not as much as some. Muck, don't you find the druid with a celestial avatar quite a bother to play? Honestly, the celestial avatar being required to provide alacrity is the only thing I really have a huge problem with on druid. As... If it wasn't for that, like, I, I would have been able to do an AoE Glyph of the Stars and res those three people when they were down when they went down. But no, I had given the group alacrity recently, so I could not do that. Um, I don't know. The, the thing is that all the other tools it provides allows me to carry groups that are struggling. And I really like that. Um, but on... I don't know. Like every every class has something that's not perfect about it. The the current the game designers for Guild Wars 2 really seem to want you to weapon swap or swap between your things constantly. Like they want Ellie's to visit all the elements. They want uh Druid going in and out of Astral. They want um you you just swap between your weapons constantly in most cases, you know? They don't want you to just sit in one weapon set and then swap to the other when you need it for some insane reason, you know? Like in other MMOs, if you've got a cooldown that saves everyone life, you can save it for when you need to save everyone's life. In this game, you can only access that cooldown if you've got another thing available, and that other thing is only available if you haven't buffed recently, but if you haven't buffed recently, then your group gets mad. Get rid of the Ellie attunement cooldown and make them like firebrand tomes easy. Uh, that would honestly be kind of cool. I swear my jump key just does not work on these platforms so frequently. There we go. Update notes. Oh, nice. Thank you, Gion. Mm hmm. Oh my god, Converters got a quality of life upgrade? Star of Gratitude can now pull from your bank. Oh! Oh, wow. Dude, every single day I go into my map storage and pull out Imperial Shards. Every single day. That's awesome. Alright, we're gonna finish these strikes and then we'll read the news. You guys should know about the age. Mm. 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 Oh my God, the fattest of lists. Mm. All of you get up. Be in my stream every day. We've got a serious problem. Oh. What? Really? We're all top men. You should know about the age. Really? Oh my God. Top men. Click. Go ninja. Go ninja. Go. Click, click, click. Alright, so we're going to do Glyph of the Stars just normal here for, for the stability. Ah, 
Well, we killed him. We killed him pretty fast. Usually that one move he was about to do is the only dangerous move on this fight, and it sends you flying. But no change in the storm. Mm. Uh, any tips for beginners? Uh, tons. That right there is a video of all the top tips I can I can give you. But if you've got any specific questions, let me know. Uh, the bears. Do you think Soto will be on sale anytime before the next expansion? No. Although it's possible that it's think think of it from like a business perspective. It's their newest, hottest product. They have no reason to, to reduce the price right now. They will probably reduce the price and put it in a bundle or something after the next expansion comes out, which will be in like August, I think. Aid. Stability for my group. Stability for my group. GG. To my knowledge, there isn't a fractal that needs tanking. I don't think there's anything in the game outside of a few specific raid boss fights that needs tanks, like a toughness tank. I don't think there's any strike. I don't think there's any fractals that need it. And I'm referring to toughness tanking. Like, I know in Old Lion's Court, there is the mechanic where someone gets, like, a star on their head and they are getting chased by the boss. But I'm talking about, like, you know, having the gear for it. Mm -hmm. Right here. Notes drop? Yes. We'll be uh, checking those out after I finish these strikes. Heard they're doing Guild Wars 3. I heard you're a liar. Guild Wars 3 gonna come out the same week as Half-Life 3? I mean, there was Half-Life Alexa. Every single time, every time, without fail, I hear this guy go, it's time. I think, do, 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 do. I cannot help it.
Back end for event table is unavailable. Check the Blish Hut Discord. What? I've never seen that message before. They broke it. Why don't you go over the patch notes? Not yet. I will be after these strikes, because I was just sent the patch notes a few moments ago. Real pleb gaming. Hi, Muck. I just picked up the game due to your videos. I loved it. I started as a necromancer. Is it good in the long run? I reached level 80 due to boost. Hello, real pleb. Uh, real talk, there is no class in the game that is simply just, like, bad at endgame. Like, there, there is no class where it's like, oh, yeah, we don't we don't let thieves into our group. Okay, well, people don't let thieves in their groups because they steal things. But, you know, they, they're not going to be like, oh, you know, necromancy uh, isn't allowed in our groups. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's it's fine. Now, what really matters is, does it have a gameplay at endgame that you enjoy? That's subjective, right? So, like, every single class has builds at endgame for all game modes. It's just a matter of, do you enjoy playing those builds? Except for heal kata. Yeah, but power kata has a has a thing in all game modes. So, like, if you like playing kata, do you like playing power kata? If so, there is stuff in endgame. If not, you might try something else. And also, you said necro, which is base. And in necro, you know, there's DPS scourge, there's support scourge, there's uh, DPS harbinger, there's quick harbinger, there's DPS reaper, there's DPS reaper. So there's there's a lot of options under the umbrella of necromancer. Spectre, Spectre is thief. You forgot DPS Reaper, the Beyblade. Spin to win. In your opinion, uh, hang on. Let me let me finish this fight, and then I'll read that. Uh, hard to hit my whole group with a lack. You guys are like completely surrounding the boss, so you're on like all sides of him. Search and rescue to get him out of the chains. Allies aid. Good job with that glide. Yeah, if someone is low health and they uh, the last of the damage they take is from falling, they skip down state and go straight to dead. No healer can save them. And uh, they have they, like they need to glide to not take the fall damage. Stability is out for my group. There's the knockback. Oh boy. Nice. Okay. 
Uh, coolest, in your opinion, what would be the best DPS Necro towards the end? I'm only level 51. I chose Necro 2, so I don't really know anything specific. Um, there's different ones that all work. For example, uh, Harbinger is a Necro with a gun. <laughs> I, it's a weird class fantasy, but if you enjoy it, uh, they basically dope up on a lot of drugs and fire bullets uh and you know that's uh, that's one way that you can play uh reaper is a necromancer that picks up uh a a panache for melee they get a giant scythe and they swing it around like a death knight uh that's very popular they are very powerful and it's very straightforward it's very simple it's i run in and i do big power damage that that's it that's the whole thing um Scourge is one that controls both necrotic energy and sand. As weird as that sound, it came out in Path of Fire, the desert expansion. And they can do shields on allies, they can be a support healer build, or they can be a damage dealing build with lots and lots of dots. More dots. for this one. New build available. Your game will restart in three hours. We'll restart after this. Search and rescue is now on cooldown. I just used it to save that person. You ready to CC? Very good CC. Well done. He's going to jump back over here. Be ready for that. Allies 8 is rezzing that one. I'm going to glyph res on top of us. It'll get everybody. And that was a three-man res. Feels good. Ugh, I was a little late with one of my CCs. That would have done it. I was trying frantically to keep people alive. I'm not sure if I should have just let someone go downstate if it means CCing Bone Skinner. Because even if I revive them, they lose all their boons. I'm not sure if worth... I'm going to let the DPS res that person. Nice. GG. So that's an example of one of the times uh, my druid felt really good to play there. I did search and rescue to get one person out of the puddle at the beginning. I did a three-man res with Glyph of the Stars. And we one-shot the Bone Skinner. But pretty good job to the group. We one-shot every strike. Thank you guys for the party. Had fun. But Muck, all Necros can use a gun with the Wizard Magic. Yep, yep. Alright, so... Let's see, a couple things here. First, let me open Blish. What is it that's screaming for updates? Okay, that's done. Shot shorts. Okay. Uh, restart. I'm gonna let this restart, and then I'll restart my game. Strike missions are what again? Been forever since I've played. A strike mission is kind of like a, a caffeine-free zero-calorie raid, all right? You go in, it's 10-man content, the same as raid, but it's just you walk in, there's a boss. No trash mobs, 
no like talking, no story, no monologuing. It's just walk in, boss, get loot, get out. That's it. So over the past few minutes, you saw us do like seven strikes back to back. So they're very easy to pug. Um, most of them are more simple than normal boss fights. Uh, hang on, just to... Ah, you have to stare at me now. Uh, just to hide my, uh, my login info. Um, they're, most of them are more simple than standard boss fights. So they're, they're more easy to, uh, to, you know, get pickup groups for. It's like a raid without story. Yeah, and the strikes are story bosses in the game, but it'll be like... You know, you go through Cantha, and then there's this one guy that betrays you, and I won't say who it is, and you fight him in the story. But then that same fight, with additional mechanics, is a strike fight, a strike mission. And then that same fight, with, a, with those same mechanics, with even more mechanics, is the strike mission on challenge mode. So, they, uh, they kind of got like three fights out of it. Uh-oh, ArcDPS is whining. We're gonna see if uh, ArcDPS is going to crash or not. If it, if it doesn't crash, I'll just leave it, that's fine. Uh, all right, logging in. Uh, Benchy says if you played FF14, it's like the trials. Is it Big Hat Man? Does Big Hat betray us? Spoiler alert, they've all got big hats! <gasps> okay. my god, look! Look! You can do the Star of Gratitude from this thing now! Oh, that's so good. Alright, let me go to Mistlock. We got some news, chat. Got some news. Mmm. Mm. Same for Modern Princess? That's what it says. Yeah, I haven't tested it yet, though. All right, hang on. Ooh. Getting up to my spot. All right. All right, chat, you ready? Here we go. It's time. All right, hello, YouTube. Muckluck here. It is Tuesday, March 19th. We knew there was a patch today, but uh, just skimming this, there is some extra stuff we didn't know about. How exciting. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, first off, note to users of third-party programs. This game may not launch or work properly after we release a new build if you use a third-party program due to possible incompatibilities. Kind of surprised to see this note here because that's always been true. ArenaNet cannot offer support if a third-party modification breaks, interferes with, or prevents you from playing Guild Wars or Guild Wars 2. Our policy regarding third-party programs can be found here. So, for example, I use Blishhood and ArcDPS. ArcDPS breaks every single update. Um, it even had an error message when I logged in just a second ago. However, it is still on my screen, so I don't know, but, uh, and then Blishhood, like, for example, uh, here's my mount wheel, it, it's still working right now. Blishhood is an overlay, not an add-on, so it doesn't usually break with updates, um, but RTBS almost always does, but that's not anything new. Uh, maybe they're just going to include that as, like, a copy pasta in their notes from now on. Um, general, added new custom post-processing options to the graphic options menu. This allows new fine control over what post-processing effects are active. Optimized uh, load it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, hold on. Let's pause there for a second. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Graphics and swapping back to in game. Uh, post processing. Bloom. Color grading. Color tint. Distortion. Light ray. Selection. Outline. Ambient occlusion. Depth blur. Light adaptation. Uh, motion blur and environment zone intensity still. But yeah, those are there. Optimized loading times between starting the game and getting to the character selection screen. Load times are improved by approximately three seconds depending on your hardware config. Okay. That's welcome. Uh, updated 11 item converters to use the vendor interface, allowing these to draw directly from the player banks in addition to their inventories. Oh! All right, so uh, just again to say this in a way that everyone can understand, there are items in the game called converters. I actually have guides on that. Uh, you can you know, search my YouTube channel just for the word convert and you will find them. Converters turn one thing you don't need into bag of random loot. Might be money. Uh, most notably, if you've ever had your inventory be completely filled with Imperial Fragments or Dragonite Ore or Bloodstone Dust piles, those are great for converters because you can convert them into other things. Now, historically, uh, for example, Gleam of Sentience, you open this up and it's got a vendor menu, which means it would pull from your material storage in most cases. 
um, stuff like that. However, others, such as the Star of Gratitude, which eats Imperial Fragments, would not. You had to have the Imperial Fragments in your bag. So literally, part of my daily routine is I would go to the bank, get Imperial Fragments out into my bag, and then shove them into the Star of Gratitude. Uh, Princess would eat Dragonite Ore, Maudry would eat Bloodstone Dust, Herda eats Bloodstone Dust. But none of these pulled from your bank. Now, though, if I click the Star of Gratitude, it pulls from the freaking bank. There we go. I just fed it 250 Imperial Fragments. They gone. So Herda, and there we go. Boom. Oh my gosh, that's great. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's been needed. It hasn't been something that I've heard people crying about recently, but I, that is a welcome change. Welcome change. All right, uh, and that was added to, well, I just you can read it. The, all of those items got that treatment. All right, excuse my sniffles, sorry about that. Fix an issue that would cause fashion prompts during the April Fool's Fashion Shows Alliance Arch to end if the show went for long enough. Honestly, I wish that if fashion shows hit a certain point in time, they just ended. So, like, you know, the uh, the, the the people uh, at the beginning, they can just, like, filibuster their dress until the people at the end don't get to go. Uh, I think that would be a good, a good addition to fashion shows. Uh, prospective contestants will now be moved to the audience area between fashion shows. Uh, cheering skills in fashion shows now grant the contestant on stage an escalating amount of approval from the judges based on the skill used. I'm going to be honest, none of this makes any sense to me. I'm just reading it for you guys. Uh, the Noblesse Oblige Mastery, which increases revive speed and removes downed penalties on a successful revive, will no longer remove downed penalties in strike missions and raid challenge mode encounters. This will help maintain the intended difficulty level of these encounters by reinstating some penalties for ignoring encounter mechanics. Okay. Amanitas moved the Starlight Lantern from inside the Great Debate Hall to outside the Great Debate Hall. Oh, I believe this one you could only access it when a certain event was going on because you needed an NPC to open the door. So I think this will make it to where you do not have to worry about that. Awesome. Uh, remove the experience and karma consumables from the Silver Map Meta Event Progress Chest awarded during the Defense of Amnitas Meta Event. The rewards have been adjusted to compensate for this change. Okay. Uh, Inner Naos moved a greater arcane chest in Niadra Dreamer Sanctum to a location where players would not get stuck. Uh, fix an issue that could occasionally cause Hylek to join the Cryptus. Yes, so the there's a Cryptus, uh, it's like the Demon of Gluttony or something, that uses the same, like, frame as a Hylek, which, kind of weird, but okay, moving on. Uh, and they recently, they just, they're flat out Hyleks were showing up. Uh, just just frogs. Not frog-looking demons, just frogs were showing up. Uh, strike missions. Temple of Phoebe challenge mode. Oh, okay, really quick, for those who have not been keeping up to it, maybe it's not something you cared to watch. Temple of Phoebe challenge mode came out uh, a short time ago. Um, and I think at this moment in time, I know of three groups that have cleared it. That's a total of three 10-man parties, which is 30 people. And all of Guild Wars 2 have cleared it. It is insanely difficult. Now, my own personal thoughts on that, really quickly, before we move on. Um, I don't mind that. You know, when they they add this stuff to the game, like, for example, when they made the Ceres fight, they got a story fight out of it, they got a uh, strike mission out of it, and they got a strike mission challenge mode out of it. So their development time that went into that made three encounters. And pretty much anyone can enjoy two of them. The third one, though, you gotta be, like, super, super try hard. Now, do I think, I've had a lot of people ask me this, do I think it's a bad thing if there are encounters in the game that only like 0.01% of the community can do? No, I don't. I think it's wasteful if they spend a lot of development time making a fight from scratch, and then most of the people cannot, uh, you know, see that fight. The same thing happened in WoW Vanilla with Nax Ramus, and then they reused a lot of those assets in Wrath of the Lich King, because like only 0.1% of the community got to see Nax Ramus at all, because it was so tough. Um, even making the key to get in the door, but that's a story for another day. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, however, uh, they have, well, I'll just read it because I think they're about to say what I was about to tell you. We reduced the overall enemy health of the Temple of Phoebe challenge mode to make the fight accessible to more players. We will be monitoring the strike mission to ensure that this brings about it to the desired level of challenge, and we are ready to make more changes if it still remains more difficult than intended. To give players the ability to experience and try to defeat the fight in its original form, we've added an option to its challenge mode to activate Legendary Challenge. Uh, players who had defeated Ceres before this change, or players who defeat him with the Legendary Challenge mode active, will earn a new Legendary Conqueror of Ceres title to demonstrate this feat. So, that means that Ceres, in total, has four difficulty modes in the story. 
There's the story mission, where you fight them on your own. There is the normal strike uh, difficulty, which I have a guide for. I've pugged that one. I, uh, that's very puggable. There is the new middle challenge mode. It's just going to be called challenge mode, but it is a step down from what it was yesterday. And now there's legendary, which is what it was yesterday. So they want the, that third one to be one that more people can have access to, and the fourth one to just be for the people that really want to go hard. Which, like I said, to my knowledge, three groups have cleared at the time of this recording that I know about. Um, so yeah, there, there's... Is, yeah, story, normal, challenge mode, and insanity. All right. Change the empowered envious gaze skill to not steal quickness or alacrity. That is not the first time they've done that because that messes things up historically. They had the same problem in... Um, uh, what was that last fractal that came out? Uh, the Surf. Silent Surf. Uh, in Silent Surf, whenever the boss would steal alacrity or quickness from a player it would get the cooldowns of the boss's abilities would you'd be affected by that and they would go out of whack and then later on the boss would do like the indicator for a skill and then do the skill like two seconds later and it just you know take you out so bosses stealing alacrity like bosses removing alack from players is one thing but if the boss steals it and acquires the alack it can mess up their timers with the way the game is currently coded and so it does not surprise me that they had to get rid of this again because they had to do that for Silent Surf. Um, fix an issue that could cause projectiles to be obstructed when attacking the an embodiment in the split phase if that embodiment was active during the phase transition. Fix an issue in which selecting an option from the challenge mode did not reset the encounter if the event was already in progress. Okay. Cosmic Observatory Challenge Mode. Fixed an issue that could cause the Precision Anxiety achievement to be awarded even if the entire party did not meet the requirements. Uh, I've done that challenge mode. I've made a guide for that challenge mode. I don't know that achievement because I never really look at achievements, but there you go. Structured PvP. A new achievement category, Profession Achievements, has been added to the PvP section of the Achievements panel. New tiers of Champion Profession Achievements have been added to the Profession Achievements category, the PvP section, each with a new title. Players can progress those achievements with their current PvP ranked wins by traveling to the Heart of the Mist. A new achievement named True Dragon has been added. Players who are PvP ranked 469 or higher will complete this achievement upon entering Heart of the Mist. Uh... What is my rank? <laughs> I just know I'm Dragon. Uh... I have no idea what rank I am. So usually this this bar here goes through like you know bunny and tiger and stuff, and then it gets to dragon, and then it's just dragon over and over and over and over and over. I have no idea what rank I'm at. Okay. Um, world v world. Wait, someone said go to PVP, and the bar should show you at the bottom. I'll like go into PVP. Okay, I'll I'll do that later. I'll do, we'll do that later. All right. Uh, World v. World. Nine new tiers of Realm Avenger achievements have been added to the World v. World section of the Achievements panel. Each tier comes with a new variant of the Ultimate Dominator title that reflects the number of players that you've defeated, such as Ultimate Dominator 2. Players can progress these new achievements with their current kill counts by traveling to Eternal Battlegrounds, Alpine Borderlands, or Desert Borderlands maps. So, uh, to rephrase that, it, you, you may already have the uh, requirements fulfilled. You just need to load into those uh, maps so that it updates and gives you your achievements. Uh, the Siege Disabler trick has been updated and renamed to Siege Disruptor. Disruptors will now reduce outgoing siege damage by 66% and they will cause affected siege devices to take 66% increased damage for the duration. Golems still have skills disabled. Okay, okay. So if someone, if one guy runs into an enemy horde stealthed and manages to get a disabler down, it's not going to just shut down all the catapults for 50 people now. Uh, but they will be vastly weakened. Interesting. I kind of like that. i um, very curious to see how that affects gameplay. Uh, we're modernizing the loadouts of Keep Lords with the addition of a new healing skill that aids objective defenders in combat, giving the Lord a more active role in battle. Keep Lords in Alpine Borderlands and Eternal Battlegrounds will now have a channeled healing skill at 75% and 25% health thresholds. Their defiance bars will only be available at these health thresholds and can be broken in order to prevent the skill from being fully channeled. We will be closely monitoring player feedback to determine if the skill should be introduced to Castle and Tower Lords as well. New 24, 28, and 32 slot bags can be purchased from Outfitters and World v. World. 32? 
Uh, these bags have been added to the Ascended League vendors in PvP. Okay, you know what? Maybe we will go into the PvP lobby, because I want to see the price of these bags. 32 slot bags crafted take a few hundred gold in materials, primarily because of the Supreme Runes of Holding. Uh, I just got a bunch of stuff. Legendary Phantom, Legendary Genius, Legendary Hunter, Legendary Hunter again. Uh, Fabled Hunter. Let's, uh, oh, the others disappeared. I guess I shouldn't have waypointed. Okay. All right. What am I looking for? Ascended League Vendors. Ascended Weapon League? Ascended Armor League. All right, hang on a second. Um, Grandmaster Craftsman Components, Subsidian Weapons. No, I don't see it there. Let's see, where's. Um, Tom of the Mist. Muck has a new patch so far. We're still reading the notes, my friend. Looking for. Bags! Here we go. All right. Here we go. Bags. Pillager's pack. Two box of Grandmaster Marks. Unopened. One Supreme Rune of Holding. 250 Shards of Glory and 20 tickets. Gets you a 24 slot bag. Um, The 24 slot bag plus two more boxes plus three Supreme Runes and 20 more tickets gets you a 28 slot bag. And the 28 slot bag plus eight runes. Okay, so you still need Supreme Runes. And box of Grandmaster marks and tickets. So all of this except the runes you can get from PvP, and then you would still need the runes. Okay. So 11 runes total. What would that price be today? Supreme runes. What is that shield? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm on the wrong screen. One sec. Supreme runes of holding. 21. All right. So currently need 11. So 237 plus WoW stuff. Uh, or PvP stuff. Well, uh, it's another option. Also, my PvP rank is apparently 315. All right, well, it's it's an option if you want. And again, if you are going to get bags in that way, I recommend getting all 20 slot and then slowly make them all 24 and then slowly make them all 28. Don't just have one go straight to 32 because for the price of that, you can have all of them be like 24 or 28. Um, items. Remove the April Fool's event requirement from the Chatoyant Elixir. Fixed an issue that caused the Expedition Cape to not have an upgrade slot, and the items needed to progress the Astro Ward Arsenal achievements sold by Heroic's Notary Vendor no longer require the player to type out the name of the item to safely discard them. Uh, Nemox says, try the Candy Corn Gobbler now. It's insane. Uh, let me... I don't know what character has it. Candy Corn Gobbler is on Mucklock Twitch. Is that this character? That is this character. Where is it? Candy. Okay, it was right there. All right, Candy Corn Gobbler. Um, use it one hundred times. Ah, <laughs> that's so great! No more using a clicker. Oh my God! Look at all those buffs. Uh, yeah, forget cut. Get rid of the costume. No more using a clicker. Which is the worst part about that mucking thing. You could, you could just shove a thousand candy corn in it and then go on about your day. Candy corn prices to the moon. Yeah, like I myself had the gobbler and I stopped using it just because it's a it's a pita. It's an absolute pita. It's a, I stopped using it myself. Now I might go back to using it. And yeah, buy candy corn stonks now. Buy the dip. All right. Profession skills, general. New changes. Relic of Fireworks. Fix an issue that could cause some projectiles to not trigger this relic. Relic of Ice. This relic can now only strike the intended missile targets. Reduce the power coefficient by half in World of World only. Alright. Oh my god, class changes. Alright, Elementalist. This release includes some updates to Arcane Skills. Arcane Blast and Arcane Wave had a bit too much overlap with each other. We wanted to give Arcane Wave a more unique identity by adding a movement component. We've also reworked and renamed the Elementalist Surge trait giving it some more powerful bonuses to individual skills instead of uh, all of them inflicting bonus conditions. Uh, new changes. Pistol. Fix an issue that caused skills to not properly use legendary weapon effects. Elemental bullets are no longer lost when using a conjured weapon or gliding. Uh, March 19th, balance update preview. 
Uh, let's see, water try to increase the power coefficient. Okay, I'm going to skip anything that is past the point of uh, the preview. We've already gone over in the past, so I will skim that, but I'll have a link to this down below, or I'll, you know, if you want to pause and read it, that either one of those, uh, whatever you need. All right, um, updraft fixed an issue that caused the skill to display a warning for allies. Flame uprising fixed an issue that caused the skill to inflict less burning than intended in competitive. Cleric leap reduced the cooldown in competitive. Earthen vortex reduced the cooldown in competitive. Rust frenzy players can now move while casting the skill. Arcane Brilliance now grants additional healing when used as a combo finisher. Arcane Power no longer grants bonuses to allies. The skill now grants a flat amount of ferocity for 5 seconds instead of the bonus being linked to the critical strike stacks. Reduce the cooldown from 35 to 30 seconds. Arcane Wave now leaps to the targeted area before dealing damage and now dazes enemies that it strikes. Why didn't they call it Arcane Leap then? Uh, reduce the range from 900 to 600. Reduce the attack radius. Increase the power coefficient in competitives. Reduce the ammo recharge time in PvE. Elemental Surge. This trait has been renamed Arcane Lightning. This trait no longer causes arcane skills to inflict conditions and instead enhances each arcane skill as follows. It gives brilliance protection to the user. Arcane Wave immobilizes enemies. Arcane Shield grants stability to the user when the shield expires. Arcane Power grants additional crit strike to the user. Arcane Blast blinds enemies. Come on and slam strikes. and welcome to Japan, kids. It's time for tentacles. I never said that. Someone made that with uh, AI. Uh, one with air. Increase the super speed duration with from 1.5 seconds to 3 in PvP. The trait still grants reduced super speed duration in PvP when the fresh air trait is equipped. Aquamancer's training. Increase the outgoing healing modifier. Uh, Tempest. New changes. Tempestuous Araya lowered the Gandhi damage increase from 10% to 5% in PvE only. Uh, wash the pain away. Increase the radius of the first pulse and the second pulse. Lucid Singularity. This trait now applies might instead of alacrity in competitives. Elemental Bastion, increase the healing coefficient in Worldly World. Uh, Weaver, bolstered elements, this trait now causes stances to grant prot instead of barrier. Alright. Engineer. In this update, we've made improvements to power-based Hollowsmith builds of PvE to make them a bit more competitive, alongside some reworks of less used traits in the Invention Specialization and some minor improvements to Rifle and PvP. Uh, glue shot, pistol 5, increase cooldown uh, in PvE only, increase power coefficient in PvE. Blunderbuss, uh, uh, let's see, these are both rifle, reduce the cooldown of these rifle skills in PvP. Um, these are Hollow Smith's sword, reduce the cooldown of these abilities in PvE, increase power coefficient of Radiant Arc. Med Blaster can now auto attack allies and increase the angle of the skill. Um, that is nice. That is a med kit one, the little spritz spritz thing, which actually heals quite a bit, but, you know, it looks like a little spritz spritz. Uh, bandage blast, increase the missile velocity and the angle of the skill. Fix an issue that caused missile angles to be incorrect when shooting at allies with full health. Infu uh, that's med kit two, by the way. They have reworked that, uh, recently, and now they are widening the cone, which should make it easier to use. Infusion Bomb fixed an issue that caused the boons from the skill to have a lower duration than intended in PvE. Um, hmm. I'm curious what it's going to be now. Uh, Infusion Bomb is Medkit 5, and it is a source of multiple boons uh, for the Scropper and Mechanist support uh, builds. So curious to see how much they were getting hurt by that. Grenade Barrage fixed an issue preventing the skill from triggering Relic of Fireworks. Automated Medical Response has been reworked. It now grants regen to allies when you use your Healing Skills Tool Belt skill. Okay, this is something I need to test right now. So Healing Skills Tool Belt skill. Um, engineer, me Mechanist, trades their Tool Belt to have a mech. So I have no idea how this is going to work with a Mechanist. So let's find out real quick. So if I open up the trait line here, uh, automated medical response. Grant regen to nearby allies when you use a healing skills associated tool belt skill. All right, so I've got a med kit. If I do F1, uh, it says it gives nine and a half seconds of regen. If I pick a different trait, it no longer says it gives that regen. Okay, so it looks like it works on bandage self. All right, just to test it, I'm gonna use it. And there is regen. Okay, so it does work with heal scrapper with bandage self. Okay, if I swap to heal mech, all right, here's heal mech, and if I choose that trait, 
Explosive knuckle. <laughs> okay, it works. Uh, weird, but I'm glad they thought of this. All right, so explosive knuckle now gives regeneration. If you have automated medical response, you just, you feel better yet? Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I was worried that this trait was going to be completely wasted on Mechanist because Mechanist doesn't have a tool, a tool belt. Uh, but they did think about that and it was added to work with the uh, Mech F1. However, you need to make sure your prot is covered because it competes with one of the traits that helps keep protection up time. But nice to know it's there. I think this might be intended for um, shortbow scrapper support because they get some prot from the shortbow. I don't know if it's enough. And then they might be able to take this to help with... Re Actually, they don't really need regen because they can use it. I don't know who this is for. <laughs> Mechanist needs this to keep prot up. They don't need this to keep regen up. Scrapper... This doesn't help, so they would take this, but they don't need this either because the Elixir Gun Healing Mist, uh, right here, this keeps regen up 100% of the time. So, Hi. neither supports need this. Maybe it's for World v. World or something. It's no secret that I don't World v. World much. Maybe it's for that. I don't know who uses that. Mecha Legs. This trade has been reworked. Gains resistance on dodging. Um... Lame. This used to give, uh, like, 30% run speed or something like that. Um, so they've taken it away from Druids now. They've taken it away from Engineers. And I think uh, Will Benders and Chronos still have it. And maybe a few others. Bunker Down now triggers when disabling an enemy instead of when critically striking. This mine, the mine, now spawns at the enemy's location instead of near the player. Reduce the internal cooldown from 4 seconds to 1 second. Reduce the mine power coefficient, or increase the mine power coefficient. And the bandage now cleanses a condition and its base healing has been increased... Slightly. So that is the skill uh, Bunker Down right here, which is it uh, spawns a mine and a med kit whenever you disable an enemy. So it spawns the med kit near you, and it cures a condition and does more healing, and the mine appears the enemy, and it is primed and ready to explode much faster now. Uh, Hollow Smith. Let's see. This stuff was already in the preview. Uh, laser Disc increased damage when above 100% heat dramatically. Blade Burst reduced cooldown in PvE. Photon Wall reduced cooldown in PvE. Launch Wall increased damage when above 100% heat dramatically in PvE. Particle Accelerator increased power coefficient in PvE. Increased damage when above 100% heat dramatically in PvE. Um, Prismatic Converter. This trait now triggers when swapping from Photon Forge to a kit. Solar Focusing Lens. This trait now triggers when swapping from Photon Forge to a kit. Uh, Nikolai says, if you take shortbow on mech, you wouldn't take the prot on the shield trait because you wouldn't have a shield. True? I, I guess that's the intent. I guess shortbow mech is the intent, which... I feel like you would lose more than you would gain. You would lose a movement skill, you would lose the three CCs that May shield has, and you would go from down to one CC on the shortbow, two if you chain it. You would lose prot, and you would gain prot, so that's kind of a cross-out. You would lose regen and vigor. If you take that trait, you gain regen, but vigor is lost. And then you've got more healing output from it. Might be okay. God, I hate I hate the engineer short. <laughs> oh, man. I, I played it for like three hours. It feels so awful. I guess I guess you're right. I guess it's for that. Um, okay. Mechanist. Mechanical genius. Reduce the recharge penalty for mech command skills when far away from the mech by 50% to 20%. I wish this wasn't even here. Rangers don't have to deal with this. I don't, like, I don't even main Mechanist right now. Freaking get rid of this whole thing. This is, this is awful. This doesn't need to be here. Uh, Guardian. The Guardian changes for this update are focused on improving some underutilized skills and traits for both Core Guard and Willbender. New changes. Symbol of Ignition, reduce the burning duration of PvE. Through the Heart, increase bleeding duration of PvE. Uh, already seen in recent notes. Zealot's Defense, you can now move while using this skill. Adjusted Projectile Behavior to interact better with gaps in terrain. Uh, Feel My Wrath skill now grants super speed in addition to other effects. Vigorous Precision now triggers when dodging instead of when critically striking and no longer has internal cooldown. Reduce the Vigor duration from 5 to 3 seconds. Focus Mastery. Protection from this trait will now apply when Shield of Wrath expires instead of when it activates. 
Uh, Redemption, increase the duration of Lesser Litany of Wrath from 3 to 4 seconds. Glacial Heart, this trait no longer chills and damages enemies that you disable, and instead heals the user when disabling, immobilizing, or chilling an enemy. Willbender, new changes. Flash combo, you gain you now gain access to Repose as long as you complete the skill, even if you do not land all 5 hits. Increase the power coefficient per hit from 0.3 to 0.4 in World v. War PvP. Repose, the skill is no longer an attack. The skill now heals and removes conditions from you after shadow stepping back to your original position. Heaven's Palm now evades attacks and finishes your targeted foe if they are downed and no other enemies are nearby. You can now move while using this skill. Doesn't this skill have like a 20 or 30 second cooldown? This is going to be a problem. Uh, Roiling Light, increase roll distance from 300 to 450, reduced roll duration from 0.75 to 0.5. Quick Retribution increase range from 300 to 450. Deathless Courage, this trait no longer removes Aegis from Courage triggers. In reduce the duration of Courage or causes enemy deaths to increase the dura duration of Courage. This trait now grants the Guardian Strike Damage and Condition Damage Reduction while Courage is active. Okay. Mesmer. We made adjustments to Mesmer's support builds in World v. World in the January update, but it's clear that they're still a bit stronger than we'd like them to be, and we're making additional changes to reduce their effectiveness. We've also made some small improvements to power-based Mirage builds in PvE. New changes. Dazzling fixed an issue which caused this trait to not affect certain stuns. Dimensional Aperture fixed an issue that could allow multiple people to take the portal. Uh, March 19th Bounce Update Preview, Null Field, reduce the field duration from 5 to 2 seconds of World v. World, reduce the number of pulses of World v. World, Mantra of Concentration, increase the cooldown in World v. World, Power Break, reduce stability duration in World v. World, Desperate Decoy, this trait has been reworked, now it grants Vigor when you invade an attack, Master Fencer, this trait now grants increased personal fury duration, Chaotic Transference, reduce the shared chaos aura duration from 4 to 2 seconds of World v. World, Temporal Enchanter, this trait no longer increases the duration of Glamour skills. Sympathetic Visage, this trait no longer affects nearby allies and only pulls conditions from the player. Chrono, Well of Precognition, now grants allies three stacks of stability for five seconds on its first pulse. Mirage, new changes. Sand through Glass no longer creates a mirror and now grants a mirror cloak at the end of the evade. Effervescence fixed an issue that prevented clones from healing with this skill. March 19th, Balance Update Preview, Phantom Razor, Increase the Power Coefficient in PvE, Split Surge, same thing, Mirage Thrust, same thing, Dune Cloak, Reworked, Gain Mirage Cloak when you shatter two or more clones. Virtuoso, Sword of Decimation skill now applies its bonus damage and inflicts additional Defiance damage on Defiant Foes. An Infinite Forge trait now refunds two blades after casting Blade Song skill with five blades in addition to previous effects. Um... Clones can now heal with spray, Bozer says. Uh, Virtuoso. March 19th, Balance Update Preview. Uh, Sword of Decimation skill now applies its bonus damage and inflicts additional defiance damage on defiant foes. A little early. Um, Infinite Forge trait now refunds two blades after casting blade. Oh, we already read that one. Uh, Necromancer. Support Scourge and World v. World also received a hit to power in the January update with a change to Transfusion. But we feel that the build is still overperforming, so we're increasing the cooldown of some of its barrier sources to make them a bit less potent. We've also tuned up power-based Harbinger builds in PvE to bring them more in line with other DPS builds. Changes. Uh, okay, so most of this is related to the new sword. Satiate Gorge. Reduce the health cost of them in competitives. Hungering Maelstrom. Fixed an issue that caused the skill to be unaffected by quickness and slowness. Garmandize and Consume reduce the health cost in competitives. Lesser Spinal Shivers uh, fixed an issue that caused this skill to deal more damage than intended in PvP. How long has that been going on? Because that's always hit like a truck. Transfusion fixed an issue that prevented this skill from healing the user when they are a Harbinger. <laughs> what? That's, that's funny. I didn't know about that one. You're a Harbinger? No heal for you. Uh, Plague Signet no longer passively transfers conditions from nearby allies to the player, instead grants reduced incoming condition damage to the user. Signets of Suffering now also causes Signet skills to steal life from enemies they strike. Well of Power reduced the cooldown from 35 seconds to 30 seconds in competitives. Scourge from the Balance Preview. Serpent Siphon increased the cooldown from... Uh, let's just say... Okay, hold on a sec. 
Serpent Siphon, Sandstorm Shroud, and Sand Cascade all got longer cooldowns in World v. World. Desert Empowerment now also grants Vigor instead of Alacrity in competitive modes. Harbinger Vile Vials, this trait has been reworked. It now causes Elixir skills to grant protection. The protection can be shared with Twisted Medicine. Um, interesting. Wicked Corruption increased the damage modifier per Blight stack from 0.5 to 1% PvE. Increased the Crit Strike damage modifier from 10% to 12.5% PvE. Cascading Corruption increased the power coefficient from 1 to 1.5 in PV, uh, PvE. And it's very interesting they're giving Harbinger a way to give prot. It's kind of cool. It's sometimes nice if you're playing certain support builds, if your DPS support can provide protection. So that is interesting. That does open some doors. Ranger. Condi-based Druid has been overperforming in PvP, and we've brought down some of its defensive tools with the goal of making it a bit easier to take down. We're keeping an eye on the strength of Evasive Purity, but we want to see how the reductions to Healing Spring and Glyph of the Stars impact the build's susceptibility to conditions before making further adjustments. We've also made a few improvements to the Wilderness Survival Specialization to make it a more appealing defensive option for power-based builds as well as condition-based builds. Uh, new changes. Evasive Purity has been reworked. Cleanse a condition when you dodge. Heal if you cleanse a condition in this way. Uh, so I think before it only removed certain conditions, not any condition. Um, Force of Nature, reduce the outgoing damage bonus from 25 to 10%, and reduce the outgoing healing bonus in PvE only. Flourish, reduce the initial power coefficient from 1 to 0.85, and delayed power coefficient from 1.5 to 1.275 in PvE. And Wild Strikes, reduce the power coefficient from 1 to 0 0.85, 0, uh, 0 0.85, and the final power coefficient from 2 to 1.7 in PvE. Uh, from the March 19th preview, Wild Swing increased the power coefficient uh, in PvE and World v. World of PvP. Overbearing Smash reduced the casting time of the second hit. Unleashed Overbearing Smash reduced the casting time of the second hit. Savage Shockwave increased the power coefficient per hit in competitives. Thump increased the radius. Unleashed Thump increased the radius. The first enemy struck by this skill will grant a greater number of boons. Healing Spring reduced the duration from 10 to 5 seconds and reduced the pulse interval from 2 seconds to 1 second. Reduce the number of conditions cleansed per pulse from 2 to 1 in World War 1 PvP. So, currently, let's see. Currently, it is 10 second duration and it does 2 condition cleanses every 2 seconds. But it also does it at the beginning. So it does a total of six cleanses each time twice for a total of 12. And it hits up to five people and it can cure up to 60 conditions over 10 seconds if everybody in it was in the worst possible state. Um, they're reducing it down to five and it pulses every one second. And it'll cleanse one per pulse. So it's going to cleanse... Um, it's going from 12 cleanses on one person to 5 or 6, depending on if it triggers at the moment you deploy it. Uh, Refined Toxins. This trait has been removed and replaced with Survival Instincts. Gain increased outgoing damage and reduced incoming damage. Gain increased outgoing strike damage when above 50% health and increased incoming strike reduction when below half health. Empathic Bond, this trait has been moved to the Master tier, replacing Shared Anguish. This trait now cleanses conditions when swapping pets instead of when using a B skill. And Carnivore, this trait has been added to the Grandmaster tier slot previously held by Empathic Bond. Steal health from enemies when you or your pet disables them. Um, Do we know how much? Hang on. Let's get back on the Ranger here. Mm hmm. So Carnivore replaced where Empathic Bond was. Empathic Bond replaced Shared Anguish. Uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Where, where was that one? Carnivore. Steal health from a disabled foe. 591 damage, 635 healing. Uh, one quarter second cooldown. So if you are hitting a disabled foe and you use like Warhorn 4, which does 16 hits, not all of those hits will trigger this. But whenever, uh... oh wait, it's not when you hit a disabled foe, it's when you disable a foe, okay. It's when you, it's when you disable, a... okay, okay, okay. So never mind. forget the Warhorn 4 example, that's out the window. 
But if you do CC too close together, you wouldn't trigger this every time. But if you, as long as you space them out by a second, you're fine. And then survival instincts gain increase outgoing strike damage, reduce incoming strike. When above the health threshold, outgoing strike damage is further increased. When below, incoming strike damage is further reduced. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Druid changes. Grace of the land now applies might instead of a lack in worldly world and PvP. Natural balance. This trait no longer reduces incoming strike damage. This trait now grants boon duration. Um, hi. Uh, natural balance, uh, which still has a boot for an icon because it used to increase our run speed, but it just keeps getting reworked to other things. Glyph of the Stars, uh, increase the cooldown of this skill in competitives, reduce the number of conditions cleansed in competitives, and reduce the revival percentage in competitives. It'll still be quite good. Um, untamed, new change. Rampant growth now tracks the intended target better. Uh, March 19th, preview. Unleashed ambush skills no longer are automatically used when auto attack is enabled. Uh, so you have to press the one key to use them. What? My wife brought me a sandwich. And I haven't started eating it because I'm reading patch notes. And I think he smells it. Hi. Uh, where were we? Uh, unnatural transversal now grants quickness instead of might. Increase of vulnerability stacks applied from 2 to 10. <laughs> so if an untamed appears behind you with that Omaiwa Shindaru crap, you have 10 vuln and they have quickness now. Uh, Revenant. Our major initiative for Revenant in this update is to rework the legendary Renegade stance. While the stance is actively used in PvE modes, it has struggled to exist in a healthy state in competitive modes due to underlying mechanics. Our goal for this rework is to reduce some of the visual clutter and increase the counterplay of many of these skills while still maintaining its viability in PvE. Soul Cleave Summit will still have a potentially long duration due to being an upkeep skill, but the other legendary renegade stance skills have all been adjusted to have a more immediate impact, granting an immediate effect on summon and having quicker secondary skills instead of long channels. These skills- WHAT?! These skills can also quickly combo with a mechanic uh, mechanic that we're calling Band Together. Using a skill other than Soul Cleave Summit will cause your next Renegade skill to activate instantly with a bonus effect. Sounds like they're trying to do the shortbow chaining thing here. Uh, new changes. Hammer Bolt. Reduce the casting time by approximately 0.4 seconds. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.35 to 0.9 in PvE. And 0.633 to 0.5 in World of World of PvP. Blossoming Aura, reduce the po final power coefficient from 1 to 0.5 in Worldly World and PvP. And Otherworldly Bond, reduce the initial damage from 10% to 5%, and the bonus increase from 5% to 2.5 in competitive modes. Uh, the following was already in the preview. Energy Expulsion, lowered the stability duration in Worldly World, increased the cooldown in Worldly World. Serene Rejuvenation, reduce the energy expulsion resistance duration in Worldly World. Drop the Hammer, this skill now has a shorter casting time to summon the Mist Hammer, which still strikes after delay. This skill now also recharges Coalescence of Ruin if it hits. Renegade stuff, this was already in previous notes. Legendary Renegade summons are no longer targetable. Uh, they, let's see, Soul Cleave Summit, reduce the casting time by half, reduce the energy cost, reduce the energy upkeep cost, in addition to its current effects, Lieutenant Ophela Soul Cleave will now strike nearby enemies and heal nearby allies when another Warband member is summoned. Dar uh, Break Razor's Bastion, Dark Razor's Daring, Razor Claw's Rage, and Ice Razor's Ire have been reworked. These skills now grant an additional effect when summoned, then they perform a new skill. Activating these skills also triggers Band Together. Band Together, your next legendary Renegade skill activates instantly and is enhanced. Activating a legendary Renegade skill in this way does not trigger Band Together again. New skill behavior is as follows. Break Razor's Bastion grants resolution to nearby allies when summoned, then performs a skill that heals nearby allies when three small pulses and one large pulse. Final Pulse grants resolution to nearby allies and grants additional barrier to nearby allies when enhanced. Dark Razor grants prot to nearby allies, then dazes enemies, then grants resistance to nearby allies when enhanced. Razor Claw enhances nearby allies' attacks with bleeding, then does an attack that inflicts bleeding on enemies, then inflicts torment if enhanced. Ice Razor's Ire inflicts Vuln on nearby enemies when summoned, then performs an attack that th uh, throws three projectiles at nearby enemies, inflicting Torment, Vuln, and Immobilize, and also inflicts Chill when enhanced. So they've given the spirits the Ranger Spirit treatment. Um, like, they're no, they no longer stay on the field except for one of them. You just throw them, they do a thing, and then they dip out. Um, that is actually the reason. For those of you who've been watching my channel recently, I've done a bunch of videos where I've been trying different supports out. One of the only ones I still haven't done is Heal Renegade. And the reason was I knew that this, this change was coming. 
uh, and I didn't want to try it right before that, uh, so I'm going to try it at some, some point in the coming days. Once someone more fluent with Renegade figures it out, then I can copy them. Um, we'll see how this goes, though. Uh, Vindicator, Imperial Impact. This skill no longer extends boons on allies. Increase the protection duration from 4 to 5 seconds of PvE and from 0.5 seconds to 2 in PvP World v. World. Increase the might duration from 9 to 10 seconds of PvE and from 5 to 8 seconds in competitive modes. Increase might stacks from 2 to 3 in competitive modes. Alright. Oh, two more. Gosh. Thief. Quickness Deadeye was significantly overtuned when it was introduced, but got brought down a bit too far from that point. This update includes a few tune-ups for the build's damage to hopefully bring it more in line with other options. We've also made usability improvements to some traits in the Critical Strikes and Daredevil specializations, along with some minor improvements to acrobatics. New changes. Meld with Shadows reduce the super speed duration from 1.5 to 0.75 and when the Silent Scope trait is equipped to PvP only. Shadows Rejuvenation reduce the initial ga initiative gain on Enter from 2 to 1 when the Silent Scope trait is equipped in PvP only. Death's Retreat increase the initiative cost from 6 to 7 in PvP. And Death's Advance increase the initiative cost from 4 to 5 in PvP. Uh, March 19th, Balance Update Preview. Double Tap now pierces. Three Round Burst now pierces. Tactical Strike, this skill now dazes for one second instead of blinding when striking from the front. Increase the power coefficient. Larsen's Strike, increase the power coefficient in competitive modes. Shadow Portal no longer breaks stun. So be careful if you're using that as a stun break. Keen Observer, reduce the health threshold from 75 to 50% PvE. The trait now gives a base critical chance that is increased above the health threshold. Twin Fangs, reduce the health threshold from 90 to 50 PV, uh, PvE. The trait now gives base critical damage that is increased above the uh, health threshold. Deadly Aim trait no longer reduces damage and now increases damage from pistol and harpoon gun attacks by 10%. Vigorous Recovery now has been reworked and renamed to Pomping Up. Gain Might when you dodge. Upper Hand now additionally restores initiative when you dodge. Daredevil, uh, old preview note, Havoc Specialist now gives a flat amount, uh, damage bonus when your Endurance bar is not full instead of scaling with remaining Endurance. New Deadeye Change, Malicious Tactical Strike now dazes for 1 second instead of blinding when striking from the front and increase the power coefficient from 1 to 1.33. Uh, malicious Cunning Salvo no longer consumes Malice when recalled. Old Notes, Stolen Skills increase power coefficient in PvE. Shadow Meld reduce the count recharge in PvE. One in the Chamber increase damage in PvE. Mercy increase ammo count in PvE. Collateral Damage increase the damage coefficient in PvE. Uh, warrior strength, uh, sorry, Warrior. In this update, we've tuned up a few of the Warrior's lesser used options in competitive modes. We've also been keeping an eye on how support builds perform with the introduction of staff and may rework some underutilized traits in a future update to give them additional tools if necessary. Uh, Inspiring World fixed an issue that caused this skill to counter its attack around your target. Line Breaker fixed an issue that caused the skill to grant fewer unblockable stacks than intended. Uh, Bullet Catcher fixed an issue that cause, could cause this skill to be canceled early. I guess I'm lucky. I never experienced um, the, that bullet catcher bug. Uh, Path to Victory fixed an issue that could cause this level 2 and level 3 versions of the skill to heal for more than intended. Uh, March 19th, a balance update preview. Arcing Slice increased the power coefficient from 1.2 to 1.3 PvP. Uh, the power coefficient when striking a low health target is unchanged. 100 Blades increased the power coefficient in PvP, increased the final power coefficient in PvP. Rush now tracks targets better. I know a lot of warriors have been looking forward to that. Uh, Savage Leap. Increased power coefficient in competitives. Reduce the cooldown in competitives. Final Thrust. Increased power coefficient in competitives. Power coefficient when striking a low health target is unchanged. Last Stand. Increased base barrier uh, slightly. Berserker new changes. Slicing Maelstrom. Increased the power coefficient in PvP. And reduced the aftercast of the skill by 0.9 seconds. Wild Blow, this skill is now unblockable and inflicts Daze instead of Knockdown. Increase the power coefficient in PvP World v. World dramatically. Rupturing Smash, increase the power coefficient from, uh, well, members in PvP. And Skull Grinder, increase power coefficient in competitive. So those were old notes, I was just rereading them. Um, and there's Chip. Uh, okay, a lot of people yelling at me, refresh the page. There is more. Okay. Ugh. Late notes. World Polish. Amanitas. Fix an issue that allowed players to summon all six Guardians before attacking Norris, the Eyes of the Abyss, and prevented the Defense of Amethyst meta event from progressing during the final phase. Uh, fix an issue that caused the weekly Seitung Province Jade Treasury Recovery Achievement. That's a mouthful. 
to be awarded upon, uh, upon completing any event on the map. Interneos fixed an issue that prevented the defeat of Niridum, Chosen of Caribda, and Vespera, Scribe of Caribda, from progressing the Envious Reprieve achievement. Uh, general, as mentioned in the main notes, main release notes, players who have previously defeated Saris in the Temple of Phoebe Strike Mission Challenge Mode before the changes to the encounter or those who defeat him with the Legendary Challenge Mode active will earn a new title, Legendary Conqueror of Saris, to demonstrate this feat. Players who accomplished this before may appear to have lost credit for the Legendary Temple of Phoebe achievement, but this achievement credit will be restored the first time they enter Lion's Arch, the Temple of Phoebe Strike Mission, or any Guild Wars 2 Soto map. Fixed an issue that prevented certain French player and NPC lines from playing during Guild Wars 2 Soto story. I'm just imagining some, like, crucial piece of dialogue not happening and everyone's just like, well, let's go! And you're just like, what? <laughs> Whatever French is for what. I, I would say it there, but I don't know it. <sighs> okay. I think that's all of it. So, again, any sections where it had, like, that right there... That was stuff we had seen before, so I skimmed those. I tried to read all the new changes completely and give my thoughts on them if I had any. Um, interested to see if the re the Renegade stuff is going to change anything. Uh, I haven't seen a Renegade in any game mode in a long time. This was a very welcome surprise. The stuff with the converters, that is really, really awesome. And a few quality of life things here as well. Uh, let's check the usual stuff in game. First off, Black Lion Chest, is there anything new in the boxes? Um, let's see, we've got Steel Lotus stuff here. The Cyber Howl Greatsword was in there last time. Still looks cool though. And Toy Maker's Party Skiff skin. Pretty sure that's new. Pretty sure that's new. That is cute though. I mean, I, I never, I don't even have my skiff on a hotkey. I don't, I never use it, but uh, it is cute though. Flu girl's gonna gonna want that. All right, next up, the gem store. Anything new here? Uh, exclusive skin available. Energized shield skin. Um, you know, I was just about to say it's rather unimpressive looking on Asura, and then it transformed. That's kind of neat. Uh, hold on. Let's actually do it in a different screen here. Let's go to here. Weapon. Energized. Where's the energized shield? Here we go. All right, so on your back, it's like folded up. And then when you wield it, it does that. Probably looks uh, better on somebody who's taller. But that is it. That's what it does. It's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. All right, anything else? Travel with friends package. Recharging teleport to friend, black lion hero point scroll, waypoint unlock, black lion outfit voucher. Uh, that's nice if you use it a lot. The, like, I, I, I use one of these, like, a year or so. That's not good for me. The rest of this stuff, I mean, if you're really trying to fast forward, I guess. I, I, I wouldn't recommend any of that stuff, though. Um, and then this is a, a lot of classic stuff returning. The Iron Maidenhood. Um, if you buy that, you can play Heal Catalyst. What? Uh, is the percentage stuff of the... Is the percentage stuff in the BLC new? Percentage stuff? I, I don't understand that question. Okay. Uh, I think that's... Is there anything new in special? No. That's old. And I did this earlier. Okay. I think that's... Hi. Chip is all up in my face right now. You get the hero points needed when you play Catalyst. I'm not looking to play Catalyst. What the heck? It shows the drop percent. Let me check it again. One sec. Search inventory. Common is 100%. Oh, yeah, I hadn't seen that before. Common is 100%. Uncommon is around... Is that 3%? Uh, rare is 0.3 to 2%. Super rare is 0.03%. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't remember those being there. That might be new. You're right. That might be new. Might be due to some of those uh, laws in the EU related to games being required to show the percentage chances. Uh, that's only in EU. Mm, yeah, I'm curious because like I'm I'm playing on EU right now. I wonder if I swap to NA later if uh, if I'll be able to see those. In NA, it still doesn't show that. Still, oh wow, just do the do that for everyone. Uh, I'm glad they put that there. It makes me want to never buy keys again. <laughs> 
I'm on NA and showing that. Okay, well, we just got someone lying in my chat. Can you believe someone would lie on the internet? Unbelievable. Okay. All right. With that, I think I've covered everything I know about. We've gone over the notes. We checked the Black Lion chest. We looked at the Wizard's Vault. And we looked at the stuff on the trading post. That's everything that I've got for right now. If you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, comments on this stuff that I missed, be sure to put it in the comments down below. I will fight you there. And as always, there will be a link to this in the description and in a pinned comment if you just want to see the source. Ah, oh, that was like 40 minutes of talking. Okay. That was an unfortunate day for my uh, lovely wife to bring me lunch 15 minutes early because it just sat here for 20 minutes. Okay. Here, you guys, look at him. Okay. You guys look at him. I'll make this sandwich. Hmm. Oh my gosh. My wife made homemade bread yesterday. It was good. I had a slice last night with some butter on it. She used it to make this PBJ, but she sliced the bread very thick. And this is the thickest peanut butter and jelly I've ever had in my life. It is difficult to bite into. Ah. I'm gonna need more water. Mmm. Do you have milk to go with it? No. You got water to go with it. Is it the best PB&J you've had today? It is, yeah. Chewing's gonna be the same amount of time as going over the notes, yeah. Oh, thanks. You guys should know about the age. Mm. What do they Candy corn going fast, mm. get it. Mm. Oh my God, the fattest of lips. What do they mean? All of you get up. Be in my stream every day. We've got a serious I gotta go. problem. Good night, Lloyd. Oh. What? Really? We're all top men. You should know about the age. Really? Oh my gosh. Top men. Click. Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. Mm. Click, click, click. Mug, open your inventory and highlight the map currencies at the bottom of the screen. Um. There's like little tooltips down there. Is that what you mean? Mm. Thank you. Uh, why do you think they give Feel My Wrath super speed when it gives Fury and Quickness? So that Guardians can kill people faster. I honestly have no idea. New build and gear set changed World v. World PvP forever with a link. I'm not clicking that link. All that gold. Um, is there any more to pick up? Hey, I got another 40 since this morning. Nice. It's my safe YouTube. That's what they all say. Um. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's fast car. Oh, shoot. In that case, I am not only not clicking it, I'm banning you. Oh, man. Thank you for the warning. Have a nice life. <laughs> Dude, he is like the most annoying person I know of in the entire Guild Wars 2 player base. I've never had any direct interaction with Fastcar. I'd like to keep it that way. Ah, I have That takes a bit. Yeah. Yeah, him and uh, him and Nudie really like making uh, like love videos about each other. Worse than Logan Altaria? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I do know that one time Fast Car was a guest on Teapot Show, 
And he uh, said that he knew where, like, he had, like, figured out Nudie's home address. And he was, like, threatening to go there. And Teapot was like, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. Because he was, like, breaking Twitch TOS, like, threatening someone in real life on Teapot's stream. And Teapot had to cut him off and stuff like that. Like, he, uh... He's a strange individual. Who's the cutie on screen? That is Chip. His... His head is over... Oh, there we go. Now it's obvious. He was just an orange lump a second ago. Man job, whatever. Yeah. Candy corn's going up. That's because it's finally easier to use. Everybody that had uh, candy corn gobblers before, you had to, like, double-click it. Wait a minute. Double-click it. Wait a minute. Double-click it. Wait. So people would set up, like, auto-clickers and then AFK for an hour and come back, and then they would play the game. Now, though, you can just be like, candy corn... Uh, open and please eat, you know, do this 100 times and boom. Now I've got two and a half, two, I got three hours of that buff, an hour of that buff. Um, I've got three hours of that buff, five hours of that buff, an hour and 40 minutes of that buff. And it's, it's so much easier now. How'd you do that? They changed it today. Or did you mean the shop menu? Hang on. All right, hang on. A little tutorial for you guys. If any of you didn't know this, two things. One, you can click in this box and you can type. Okay? You can, like, click on something and say, give me five of that. Second tip. You can left-click and move the mouse up or down and do this. So whatever is easiest for you. You can just click, drag, buy... Or you can click and type in a number. You do not have to use the little up and uh, up and down arrows. How do you get the vendor though? I just told you they changed it today. It's um, it's right here. Oh, if you're talking about the item itself, the candy corn gobbler, the candy corn gobbler is for sale in the gym storm around, uh, store around Halloween time, if that is what you're referring to. Mike says, uh, sincere question, been watching your streams for a few years now. I know that before you were doing the same routine or something every single day. Uh, how did you get, get, uh, not get bored of doing the same thing for literally years? Mike, um, if you mean the routine where, like, I farm my home instance and my uh, alt parking each day, I still do that each day. It takes 10 minutes a day. I mean, I'm also up to 10,000 gold. It's working very well. Like, just to just to show. Um, if you When you say same routine, if you mean, like, how Sublime. I live my entire life, I am a creature of habit. <laughs> Captain Crapface says, I heard about the most annoying person in Guild Wars 2 community. Someone called me. Uh, bro, are you kidding me? Captain Crapface, you're not, you're not even in my top 20 for most annoying. You are a gem. You are a diamond in the rough. Do not change. Is there all parking spots for large arcane chests, or is it better to run around and try to find them? Uh, yeah. In the daily video that I made, I show three of them, but you could also search for them on uh, the wiki. I think the question was asked, how are you managing to get those 10 minutes of daily done without getting bored of it? It's 10 minutes. That's like saying, how do you get bored of doing the dishes or doing laundry? You know, it's just... I just say, like, I'm going to do this. Also, I usually do it while I'm talking to stream. So it's like I'm carrying on a conversation and just, like, making money in the background for 10 minutes. It's not a huge thing. I did stop. Uh, I used to also log into a couple of alt accounts, my wife and my sons, that they used to use just for the daily login rewards. But then the program I was using to log into them started giving me trouble. And rather than, like, troubleshoot and fix it, I just stopped doing that. So that part of my routine I stopped doing. Uh, currently browsing for a place our Patreon page for sponsoring a fishing stream. Can't seem to find that option. That would be Sponsor of the Zone, the top tier. God have mercy on my soul. 
I warn you, that, that tier is expensive for a reason, because it basically hijacks a stream and all the viewers. Um, for example, the other day I played Stardew Valley for the first time, because somebody wanted me to play that. After the fast car ad, can we have a gluten-free ad? Sure. Wait, I'm eating gluten. What did I think of Stardew? It was alright. I could see the charm. Like, I could see why people loved it. Um, for me, like, I honestly kind of liked the farming part. It was kind of therapeutic. Like, alright, you know, clear out the boulders, clear out the weeds, chop down the trees, pick up the lumber, plant some stuff, till the soil, water. It was therapeutic. And then I was like, it give, it give, it, like I had to go introduce myself to the 28 people that lived in town. That was... Okay, I tolerated that, you know. There was a mine I could do for combat in there. That was kind of cool, except the combat was just... Chop, 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 chop. It was like old-school RuneScape combat, you know? So, I, I went down like 40 levels in the mine doing the combat. I was doing stuff at the farm. And I was like, alright, I, like, right, I don't like dealing with these people. Uh, the farming is kind of nice. And then, like, the season changed, and all my crops died. And I had to, like... It was like any crops I planted that hadn't, like, you know, became ready for harvest before the season changed, they all just died. And you had to plant new crops. And the thing is, I've played games where you had to play plant crops based on seasons before. But in those, you weren't planting them individual. You would just, like, zone an area and be like, this whole area is carrots, you know? You just, like, drag you know, drag a square. Uh, but in, in Stardew, you have to plant or replant every individual carrot or flower or potato or whatever. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is quite a task. So... I, it didn't really give me the urge to like keep going, but I, I felt like the the game, the part of the game I liked the most got just got like a total kick in the pants. But I'm I'm clearly not the target audience, but it was all right. I could see I could see how it was charming. I had no interest in wooing the townsfolk. There was actually a screen where you could see who all was single. I was like, yo, I don't care. I'm here for potatoes. I'm not here for romance. I'm here for potatoes. I'm gonna give Muck a fishing stream. Oh god. Uh. How would you know I'm a potato? Where was I? I would hate I'm every minute now. of it. Uh. Mm. Booty! Mm. I'm a potato. Oh yeah, yeah, that was another thing. At one point, I had to go to this one lady to buy uh, chickens from her for my chicken coop. And I go to her, and her house says it opens at 9 a.m. There's hours written by the door. It's like 8.50. So I wait until 9 a.m. and her house opens. I walk in. She's not there. I can wander around her house. She's not there. I'm like, what the hell? So I wander around town for half a day, finally find her. She's coming back from her yoga class or something. And I talk to her, and she won't, like, open a merchant window. She's just like, nice day! And I'm like, oh my god. So I'm, like, following her back to her house, hoping she becomes a merchant when she goes back to her house. And I go inside, and then she, uh, she goes into her kitchen and just starts staring at the microwave. And I'm like, can I buy some chickens? And she's just like, I'm, I'm busy. And I'm like, What? And, like, someone Googled it, and apparently, like, she's, despite the fact that there's store hours on the door, uh, she is off on Saturdays, and on Saturdays, she stares at the microwave for nine hours. So I had to wait for her to finish staring at the microwave for nine hours before I could buy the chickens. So that was, uh, that was a thing. That was an experience. Who won in Rift Breaker? I did. It was very, very fun. Yeah, I, I beat it on Brutal with chat interfering... Uh, we popped all the eggs for the finale, and we, uh, had the one wall around the whole base. The, the one wall challenge. I had the same experience with, uh, BDO that you had with Stardew. Farming was better than combat. Cap, I played BDO for a year, and most of that was trade skill stuff. 
Um, I found out that uh, you could use cooking to level up like 20 different things. And so I just used cooking to make beer. And then I would give the beer to my workers on the map. Because like when you open the map, it was like playing Civ. So I had workers all over the map. And I, I had just like this massive potato-based empire. It was great. And I, I remember I, when I finally quit the game and then later I came back to it, I had like billions because I had made so much money just like trade skilling in the past. Um, BDO's combat is the only thing I like and yet the content of the combat was so dry. I think BDO is a fun game to play. I think it's boring to stream it. Because it's just people watching you do the same thing on repeat. Potato-based empire, so you were Irish. <laughs> but without the famine. Mm-mm-mm. Oh. Any plans for the next morning streams? Yeah. But... There's some secrets. There's some stuff I can't say yet. Just know that there's some pretty cool... There's a pretty cool thing coming up, but right now it's a super secret thing. I can tell you in, like, two days. Sounds shady. Less so than fast car. They made Muck as a farmer and turned the potatoes against him. What? Farmer against potatoes, idle. Pick up your sword and fight off waves of potatoes. What? The potatoes are my friends. What? Stop infinite potatoes? <laughs> this looks like an auto clicker game. Oh my god. Overwhelmingly positive. Dude, there's a lot of people out there who hate potatoes. Skill tree muck is sold. Oh my gosh. I'm going to spec for maximum potato damage. Did you update the game yet? There's a new icon for Gift of Craftsmanship. Um, I did update my game, yes. What is a fast car? It's a car that can go over like, you know, 50 miles per hour. It's the name of a player that's been at the source of a lot of drama. I don't like drama. So he popped into my chat earlier and I just banned him. I was just like, he was like, hi, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't, I don't like drama. Like, I, I'm the kind of, dude, okay, look, you guys need to understand. I'm the kind of person, um, you, you know how sometimes on like TV, they're like, you know, family is the most important thing. If I have a member of family that's causing me a lot of drama, I stop talking to them. I'll see them at Christmas and Thanksgiving, and then I'll see you next year. And if they try to pull me aside for anything, I'm, I'm busy. I'm, I'm eating turkey right now. <laughs> like, I will, I will just not have you in my life if you are causing me stress. I, that's very easy for me. I'm just like, nah, we're done. <sighs> the game had idle in the title. It did. It did. We want spoilers about tomorrow. No, no spoilers. I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. Can't tell you yet. Cannot tell you yet. Uh, I go a step further. I just go to have my family and never see him at Thanksgiving Christmas. Great decision. Mm, I was wondering yesterday why it was an axe. Um, the gift of craft. Okay, so you're saying gift of craftsmanship changed icon? Uh, I don't know if I have one. What the heck? <laughs> I can't type in this box. There we go. Battle, condensed magic. Yeah, I don't think I have a gift of craftsmanship right now. If you tell us the secret, we won't tell anyone. Yeah, let me just tell a secret to 546 people. No, not gonna do that. <sighs> two days. There's a Curse of Gilders 2 search box with this huge priority. Yeah, that was weird, because I had... 
I had this screen open, and I had this open, and I backspaced this, but when I started typing, it went up here. So the backspace went there, but the entry went there. It was, it was definitely odd. Did they fix only tailors have to go through Lear's Forge for Legi armor? Uh, I, I, when I made a piece of Legi Obsidian armor the other day, um, it could only be made in the Wizard's Tower. And I've had some people tell me in YouTube comments that it could be made anywhere in the Wizard's Tower. It didn't have to be at Lear's Forge. I made my piece at Lear's Forge. But I do know it doesn't let you make it in a different city. Because I tried that and it didn't work. Uh, correction, BDO would be a great game if developers didn't jump every system in the entire game to extract more money from Korean kindergarten gambling addicts. Yeah, I didn't spend... Okay, so I'm of the opinion and with Black Desert Online, you need to spend like $100 and then you're on a pretty even playing field with everybody. But there's absolutely the psychopaths that spend like $100,000 and they're way above everybody else. But I don't think in that game, like, if you spend 100 bucks on the game and, like, all the, all the content you need, um, and then you've got some other guy that spent, like, $2,000, he, he could very well not be ahead of you at all. Because he might have, like, did some more crafting stuff and failed it. Uh, VTuber Muck, go, go. <laughs> I really like the art pieces and the logistics of Gilbert's, too. Yeah. Excuse me, this is my first time catching you live, but it is actually, uh, to, uh, is it actually okay to use Blish on stream? Uh, no. If it's on your stream, the police are on the way. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, there is a set of add-on requirements that Guild Wars 2 has. And at the moment, and for all the time up until this point, Blish has not broken those add-on requirements. If that changes, I will be the first person to stop showing it on stream, or stop using it if I have to, because I do this for a living. I would, uh, I would be, like, it would hurt me more Mark than the Luck average Dancing. player. It would hurt me more than the average player if I were to get in trouble for that. So, if I'm using it, to the best of my knowledge, it's fine. It's allowed. I'll be honest, I don't even know how to access most of my mounts without this wheel at this point. I've been using it so long. Uh, Matsumoto, thank you for the prime sub, buddy. I appreciate that. Welcome. $200 for a muck fishing stream. This will be happening soon, chat. I'll make this happen. Oh my god. Feel free to not. You can just not do that, and it would be fine. Dude, that would be five hours of me cussing at fish. You don't want that. You, you don't want that. You think you want that, but you don't want that. That's a lot of time. Muck, what is the state of the game at the moment? Uh, victorious. Uh, I haven't played in a while. Is it still alive and well? Yeah, yeah, it's doing fine. Um, the, you know, with, as with every new expansion, there's pros and cons. There's some things people like, there's some things people don't. But it's still alive and well. I mean, I'm standing in one of the towns right now. You can see there's just there's a ton of people here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just mostly just chatting at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's the stuff is still active. Events are still going on in the open world. It's going great. Have you seen the game Backpack Battles? Yes, someone did recommend it to me and I looked at it. It looked cute, but I haven't played it yet. Are you sure we don't want that? Because that sounds like a great time. You don't want that. Keep in mind, I don't drink, so I don't even have any alcohol to dull the pain of a fishing game. <laughs> it's just gonna be like cast line. Uh, I'm bored. Uh, cast line. Uh, the dopamine, it's gone. Wouldn't you play fishing just by playing Dredge? At least Dredge was kind of fun. Dredge, you had like a huge net behind your boat and you just like, meow, you just ran around with a boat and just caught the fish in the huge net. You weren't using like a... Yo, you weren't doing that. You just had nets and traps. Gilbert's 2 Radio works much better than my experience. If you have Gilbert's 2 AOM, it should be on if it's an analyst at the bottom. Uh, BDO is a micro microtransaction treadmill if you want to stay relevant for longer than a quarter. Mm, I don't think so. Cap, Cap. I, when I played the game, I spent some uh, like up to a hundred dollars getting the game, and getting the what is it? Like three pets. Uh, for those who don't play BDO, your your miniature, like your you know your fun pet, they loot for you. So if you've got like at least three pets and you're just like running around and just killing things as fast as you can, they're getting all the loot. They're picking all of it up. So if you don't have pets, you absolutely go much slower than people that do because you have to stop to loot and they don't. 
And they just run around, run around, run around. So it's... I feel like you kind of need that to be on an even playing field. And the freaking ghillie cloak. The ghillie cloak, when it was a thing, was a problem. So, okay, you guys see how this guy's name is floating above his head? There was a cloak in the cash shop called the ghillie cloak. And if you had it, your name was no longer above your head. Which allowed you to basically, you know, hide behind objects as if it was an FPS. <laughs> so in PvP, you had an advantage if you had a ghillie cloak. Um, I believe they changed that later on, but that 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 feature was absolutely pay for advantage for PvP. But as someone who was mainly doing like trade skills and crafting, um, I just got the pets and I was fine. And I actually got pretty high on the leaderboards for the time that I was playing too. Gilly isn't needed anymore. Right, it got changed eventually. I do know that, uh, I think that they've made it easier to get, like, some of the mounts and stuff. Like, I remember when I played the game, I only saw someone with a Pegasus mount once. Now, like the flying horse, now they just, like, give those things away. Outfit's a video of stats that you cannot get without the outfit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be, for anyone who's never played it, it kind of, it'd be like, imagine in this game, if you've got your character, and then you had, like, an outfit over your character, and the outfit was, like, minus two seconds to the crafting speed when cooking. So if you cook a thousand items, that adds up real fast. You know, imagine when you hit that create all button. Like, if you're, if you're just, like, crafting all day, that shaves away hours and hours of time. Uh, they've recently gifted the Pegasus and the Unicorn. Yeah, I saw their advertisements for that. They gave a lot of uh, the, a lot of the stuff that was like uber rare in Endgame when I played is now like given away to get players to come back to the game. Um, the free Pegasus was the only time I'd ever went back to videos for like ten minutes. Uh, I need that for when I'm crafting fifty thousand Mythic Lingrods, right? Uh, I like that now you can access all storage from any storage keeper in BDO. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I knew uh, each of the when I played each of the the banks in the cities were separate. Mm, the free Pegasus was the only time I ever went back. Um, the downloaded got the horse uh, uninstalled. Downloaded got the horse and uninstalled, lol. Free Pegasus, nah, I've read mine. I need to do a quest line to unlock it. Dodge and BDO existed as a s stat last time I played, which meant that people with accuracy stat low enough couldn't even hit you. Hmm. Uh, miss the go- wait, drive muck to drink? What? Oh, I think that was for the fishing conversation. Miss the going over the update, but muck, did you see they changed the gift of craftsmanship icon and added percentages to the black line chest? Yes, we were actually talking about that earlier. Um, if I go here, yeah, I think that's because of those new EU laws, but yeah, that's them right there. Um, as far as gift of craftsmanship icon, I have not. I don't have a gifts crafts gift of craftsmanship on me. Um... I doubt the wiki's updated this fast. Yeah, it still looks like an axe on here. So I can go to a prof person. Hold on, there's a provisioner person near me, isn't there? I think there's one in this town. Right there. Let's see. It's a fork now. Or maybe like a crown thing? Like it goes on the front of a crown or something? Okay, I mean, it looks more craftsmanshipy than an axe. Did you already make a video of the patch? Is it in YouTube? Hello, Melander. Uh, I I have uh, recorded it. We we did it earlier. Here, hold on a sec. I'll make it right now. Mm, hold on, I gotta find it. Benchy says if you played FF14, it's like the trials. All right, chat, you ready? Here we go. It's time. All right, hello. You all right, hello YouTube, Muckluck here. That's it fine. is Tuesday. Uh, if you just want to see the source. There we go. All right. Galeworth 2 knows 3, 19, 24. Boop. Okay. All right, it's making it right now. But you can, if you just want to see the source, I can link you the source of it. Hang on. And I'm going to put that in there and put that in there. Uh, if you want to have me read you the notes with my ASMR voice, uh, it will be ready soon, TM. Or you can rewind the VOD, because it was during the stream. I was standing in Mistlock when it happened. 
Uh, it's funny the paid win kept making semi-competitive uh, quit. Uh, BDO when devs uh, gave away endgame rewards, which made Whale start to quit because they realized they were no longer special. Uh, it was during the stream? Yes, Thomas, it was during the stream. It was like an hour to an hour and a half ago. Twitch only shows 720 on the player. Did something bork? I Someone said that earlier, X4, and I asked chat. I was like, what resolution do you guys see me as? And a bunch of people said 1080, but then another bunch of people said 720. So I don't know what's going on. I am uploading the stream at 1080, but apparently it's not reaching everyone at 1080. So I don't know... 360, oh no. Uh, I don't know why. Hopefully when I stop the stream and restart it for tonight, it will be better. I see you as a 10 out of 10 muck. Thank you. Chip's also 10 out of 10. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm trying to get him to look at you guys. It's not working though. Genuine question. Uh, as I have kids, remote job from home, if I do the sponsored relaxing fishing stream, well, you say relaxing. What is the sponsored ballpark time at night it would be so I could schedule my kitchen pass to enjoy the whole thing? So, Dadcot, usually if someone sponsors a stream, it's done during an... Oh, I scared them off. Oh, dang. Uh, it's done during an evening stream, so 7 p.m. Eastern to midnight. Uh, and I usually talk with the person on the day. So usually I do it on like a Friday or a Saturday, and we figure out a day that works. Uh, I will say the next, like, from now to the end of the month, we're going to be very busy. Because there is this new patch that just hit, and I've got to try some stuff out. Hold on a sec. And there is um, Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out in a couple days, and I want to spend time on that. And there is something new that just came up that I can't tell you guys for 48 more hours that is going to be eating up a lot of time. But it's going to be incredible. So, be full of excitement and mystery, because I can't tell you guys till Thursday. Uh, so yeah, the, the, from now until the 30th, we'll be very, very busy. Dragon's Dogma. Now, I already mentioned Dragon's Dogma. So it's just going to be Guild Wars 2, Dragon's Dogma, and something unknown. It's going to be very busy. PoE. Not Path of Exile, no. Incredible, you're setting a high, high bar, sir. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. Mm, not sure if it's my connection or yours, but for some reason when I have you on full live playback, it stutters and I lose out the real-time fade. Hmm. Did you know if you use Unnatural Transversal and Untamed with Quickness, you cannot get the recharge reduced? What? No, I did not know that. Are you saying, like, Alacrity is not affecting it? It's going to be Minecraft? I've played Minecraft before. I was, uh, very new about it. It was, uh, there was a, a Father's Day stream where I played Minecraft for my very first time with my kid. We actually ended up making a community server, and then we all just ran around in there, and everybody was invited, and they we built stuff for a while. Um, and then I did, like, a, a tour, but, like, it got to the point where everyone got bored of it after a few months, and we shut it down. But before shutting it down, uh, I did this video, touring the community Minecraft server. What have they built? And that little shadowy dude was my dude. But, yeah, we, we did that. <laughs> if you want to see... An ancient video of my first time playing Minecraft. There's there's that. It's an oldie. I remember that. Doc Doc was there. Is it Horizon Forbidden West? No. The surprise is not that. Hmm. Uh, icon change. Can I get two screenshots of the icon change? I tried using the skill with the quickness spoon. It won't reduce the recharge. Well, quickness... Uh, hold on. Are you thinking of Alacrity, Bowser? So alacrity is what reduces the recharge. Quickness just makes you cast it faster. Like, quickness makes this bar here faster. Alacrity is what reduces the recharge time. Oh, are you talking about the if an enemy is struck, the skill's recharge is reduced uh, part of it? Hang on. I'm not doing anything right now. I'll go test it. Mm. Let's see if we can find a bug, chat. 
You should repeat the Minecraft project when you feel like it. Free content for days and the game is still popular. Yeah, I remember I found out that cactuses did damage to enemy NPCs, so I surrounded my home with cactuses, and at one point there was a like a raid or whatever it's called happened. And uh, my house was one of the only ones that didn't get damaged because all the mobs that attacked my house just ran into the cactuses and died. It was great. Mm, there's no relic which grants regen for the group. Uh, I don't know one off the top of my head. Okay, pet on passive. Alright, unnatural transversal. 40 second cooldown. If it hits an enemy, the skill's reduced. Okay, it went down to a 19 second cooldown. Alright. So, if I have quickness, supposedly, it will not do that. Alright, so there's this. I have quickness. Okay. Uh, I can confirm. I see your bug. All right. Let me do this in a compact thing so I can just throw it into a tweet and, and I'll put it on blast. Um, hold on. Thinking about my words. Uh, when you do Renegade, you'll complain about the region application. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Um, honestly, if Renegade can't keep regen up on its group, it's not going to see a lot of content. It's, uh, it's, it's just not. The regen is the largest source of healing for almost any healer. If you lose that, it's, uh, it's, it's such a setback. Skill issue? It's an issue with their skills, yeah. All right. Hey, Guild Wars 2 community. Uh, bug of the day here. Something that someone else showed me, and I'm going to show you. Today's topic is unnatural transversal. Uh, this skill reads, if an enemy is struck, the skill's recharge is reduced. So I'm going to click on this. It has a 40-second cooldown. I'm going to use it. It's down to 19 seconds, because the enemy, which is this golem, is very bad at dodging. Okay. However, let's try this again. I'm going to use the training room thing to reset the cooldown. I'm going to ambush, okay? And the reason for this is to give myself quickness. I now have quickness for eight seconds. Transversal, 40 second cooldown. So in short, if you have quickness, it seems that the unnatural transversal second part of it, which reads, if an enemy is struck, the cooldown is reduced, does not work. Um, but if you don't have quickness, quickness is worn off. It goes from a 40 second, well, well, okay. Uh, now it's not working. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Hold on a second. Stop. Okay, now it's just never working. All right, I don't know. I don't know. There's something going on there. I thought I had a handle on the cause and effect, but apparently it's uh, something more than that. So I got no boons, and now it's not getting reduced. Unle now, the thing is, it provides... Wait, it provides quickness itself when I'm unleashed. Let me move unleashed to the pet. Okay, it's the same thing. When, uh, so when I unle- when I have the unleash on me, and I use tra traversal, it gives me quickness before the impact, and then it fails to reduce the recharge. That's it. So, yeah, it is still the same thing. I just thought for a second that I was wrong. But, yeah, uh, that- that's your bug of the day. Uh, do with that what you will. Hopefully they fix that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Leave it in. I'll leave it. Uh, try with quick and pet unleashed. Um. Still long cooldown. So it's not the unleash. It's the quick. Can tomorrow's bug of the day be praying mantis? They're neat. <laughs> Quickness seems to be messing with traversal skills weirdly now. Is it affecting something else? Uh, let's see. Okay. Hmm. Hey, uh, one tile says, Hey man, love your content. Just started to play Guild Wars 2 and your vids are helping a lot. Oh, thank you for the kind words. I'm glad they're still helping folks out. If you have any questions or anything, let us know. Uh, Mace 3 and Sword 2 on Ranger, not actually speeding them up correctly. Hmm, interesting. What is the number one class that matches the Asura theme?
Hollow Smith? I don't know. Because, like, there's an engineer, right? But Asuras in their city are so advanced. Like, they have holograms and robots. But then engineer is kind of steampunk. You know? Engineer is using, like, a flamethrower and some mines and, you know, <laughs> spring boots. You know? It's kind of like Acme engineer. But then you've got Hollowsmith that has, like, you know, solid light projections and stuff. Mechanist, yeah. So I guess the any of the NG Elite specs, kind of. Uh, hey, Muck, now that Obsidian is out, do you think it's the fastest Legi armor to get? Absolutely not. It is a Legi armor you can get. Do I think it's the fastest? No. If you are willing to learn raids, raids is the fastest. Uh, but Obsidian is something that you can... Like, okay, raids, you can only do so many raids per week, right? Like, the, you could clear all the raids in an evening if you're with a group and you all know what you're doing. But then the rest of that week, you can't make progress on it. Uh, Obsidian Armor, you could spend 100 hours in a week working on that if you want to. I don't recommend it, but you can. So you can get it sooner, but that doesn't mean it's faster. The overall time you spend on it is still going to be way more. Uh, first set, yeah. For the first set of raid armor, you also get the precursors for free. They're achievement rewards. Need Muck to play Norn Mesmer? I did that once. There was a uh, stretch goal for a charity event one time, and one of the goals was that I would play a Norn Mesmer in PvP for a stream, and... <sighs> what was her name? We made a female Norn Mesmer. Na her name was like LaChonk's daughter, or something like that. And we ran around PvP lasering people with her for a day. And I felt dirty afterward. Candy corn was 50 copper, now it's 83 copper. No, now it's 83 copper so far. <laughs> Lucy McChonk's daughter. Yeah, there we go. Muck, what do you think about the Willbender flash combo change? I think Willbender needs to go. I think it had its time. You know, it was nice. It, it was it was okay while it lasted, but I think it's like just broken beyond repair at this point. I think it just needs to go. <laughs> Dude, Wolfender is ridiculous. It gives it, it like appear it, like in PvP, they run up to they're like on the other side of a wall. Then they give themselves virtually every boon in the game, teleport through the wall on top of you. Beat the ever-living hell out of you. Now they have an Execute Heaven's Palm, which they evade, and it has like a 20 or 30 second cooldown, and it just guaranteed stomps you. And then they just port back across the wall again. And if they fail to kill you, then they'll wait a second, and their cooldowns come up, and they do it again. It's absolutely ridiculous. It honestly feels like fighting a hacker in an old shooter. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't uh, yeah. don't like them. Why is candy corn rising, rising in price? Because they changed the candy corn gobbler, and now it's a whole lot easier to use it, like, you know, a hundred times. Like, you, you could open this up and be like, you know, do this a hundred times, and then just boom, like, every freaking booster buff. Since when anyone could teleport through walls in this game? Uh, if it's a shadow step, and you have line of, and you have your uh, target. So, like, I've played with really good willbenders before, and they'll be like, you know, put a target marker on that guy, and I'll do this, and then he'll, like, port through the wall onto him and kill him. Like, as long as they have the target, they can port onto their, port to that person without, um, without line of sight. Yep, 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 yep. Sounds like fighting a specter. Yeah. I mean, they don't go invisible, but again, the thing with Willbenders is they have silly access to boons. Like, when they pop on you, they are ready to tank Deimos. They have, like, every buff in the game virtually. And so you, you've got to deal with that. My Shadow Steps give me no valid path to target on a funny uphill. <laughs> yeah. I got that too when I play Spectre. Is the mech bug still in the game where you can use the base engineer tool belt with a mech? I don't know of that one. I can't say. It makes me a bit sad that Wilbender overshadows Dragon Hunter so much. Dragon Hunter still does really, really good damage. 
but it doesn't really bring much buffs for itself, so it relies on its group for that. And then, of course, the traps. You know, you can pre-trap certain bosses and you know set you know and kill them much faster. Uh, you know, PvP stuff like that. So they've they've it's still got a unique thing going on. What ranger build do you use at PvP? The last time I PvP'd, I placed in Platinum Two, and then I played like three more games, and then I stopped, and that was I think the season before last. Um, I really do not like the current state of PvP. Now, what I'm about to say is not fact, it's opinion. Okay, this is my opinion. I want to be very clear on that. Um, I've been, you know, playing this game actively for like five years now, and I feel like this is like the worst meta. It's way too bursty. Like, it feels more like a, a first-person shooter than it does an MMO. Like, people just like, uh, Willbenders, for example, uh, they, they can just pop each other. You know, it just very, very quickly, someone appears on you, you're dead. You're dead. And they, they took the tanky amulets out, and then they added in power creep, and now everyone just does stupid damage. It's absolutely ridiculous. So the fights are often over in a heartbeat unless you perfectly dodge or block at the perfect moments. Um, so I, I've really... I, I was such a fan of it. Like, I, I have 5,000 games played. Like, I, I have very much enjoyed PvP in this game, but not lately. I've I've been, you know, and it's been like, okay, I could PvP or I could go play another indie game. I'll play the, I'll go play another indie game. I've been enjoying other titles. So, if they fix that, I'll be back. But lately, I have not done much PvP or World v. World. But the last time I played Ranger in PvP, it was a, it was a druid build. Uh, I'm with you. I prefer MMO PvP to be slower paced. Yeah. Like, I'm not asking for them to bring back the bunker meta. That had its own problems. I'm just saying that the current one is just people die way too fast. What's your favorite indie game? Oh, wow. That is a good question. Uh, what are the last ones I've played? Let me open up Mucklet Plays here. Did you guys know I have two YouTube channels? Uh, let's see. We've been playing Timberborn this last week. Timberborn is like a city city simulator game, but with beavers. <laughs> uh, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of water physics in the game. Like there's a like you build by a river because you need water to live. But then occasionally there's a drought, and you can build a dam to block the water so that less of it leaves when the drought happens. But then sometimes a bad tide comes in, which is like it's like Pepsi water. And so you want to have a dam upstream that can re-divert that around you to somewhere else because you don't want that to go through your village. Yeah, and it's been really interesting. Uh, Hell Divers 2. I don't know if that counts as an indie game. I've been having an absolute blast playing Hell Divers 2. It honestly reminds me of playing Early Planet Side. Uh, that's been a lot of fun. Pacific Drive. I'm going to be doing a review video on this one for those of you who have seen my Is It Worth It series. This one was... I don't even like car games that much, and I loved this. That to me, that's like really in indicative of how good it was. Pacific Drive was kind of like playing Raft. Like you had a vehicle, and then you got parts from other things and used them to upgrade your vehicle. And things would damage the vehicle, and you had to repair them or lose those parts or upgrade them. And it kept getting fancier and fancier. But instead of being stranded on the ocean, it was like you're stranded in the X Files. Uh, Pacific Drive was a very very fun game. Last Epoch, fantastic new ARPG. Um, Deep Rock Galactic is silly fun. It's it's like Soulstone Survivor or Vampire Survivors, but you know, Rock and Stone. Uh, that one's a lot of fun. It's an early access game though, uh, so just know that if you plan on picking it up. Against the Storm was a game that I streamed for 50 hours, and I felt like my community got bored of it, so I wrapped it up there. But I kept playing it off stream, and since then I've played like 150 hours. This has been a fantastic game. Absolutely loved Against the Storm. I put so much time into that. Rogue Legacy 2, I didn't finish it, but I did have fun. Um, it was getting to the point where bosses were taking me many, many hours of attempts to kill them. So I ended up just putting it down uh, just because of the time investment. But it, it is a fun game. Uh, it is a roguelike. So if you are interested in roguelikes, that might be fun for you. Uh, Stormgate Early Access. Um, I'm hopeful for this game. I am someone who enjoyed playing StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. And this is from some of the developers. And so we played it during the open early access. We did the new Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Uh, you know, it's spooky. Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Freaking 179 episodes. This was such a long game, but it was great. It was fantastic. Uh, if you like classic RPGs, like uh, Baldur's Gates, 
uh, Divinity Original Sin, you, but you don't mind one that's in the Warhammer 40k universe, or that sounds cool to you, this was amazing. Very good game. Um, Loop Hero was really, really good and fun. I played that all the way to completion. Dyson Sphere Early Access. That's the last one I'll say. We're all the way back to what I did in January at this point. Dyson Sphere Early Access was fantastic. I played it all the way until I built the Dyson Sphere. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that was very enjoyable. It kind of scratched that Factorio itch, but they're adding more to the game, which is exciting because that means that there's more coming. Um, Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley was charming. Is definitely not my usual type of game. And I, the guy that sponsored it, I told him that. I was like, this is not the type of game I normally play, but I'm willing to if you still want to see me do this. He goes, I want. He goes, I, he goes, you're my favorite streamer. This is my favorite game. I want to see you try it. I was like, okay. And I did it, and we played it for about five hours. I could see the charm, I could see the appeal of the game, uh, but I did the parts that you know most appealed to me, and it wasn't something I wanted to you know keep keep doing. Um, Hades Two, Vampire Survivors, Darkest Dungeons Two, and Have a Nice Death are my four favorites. I have played all those, and those are all great in different ways. Yeah. No potatoes, you're long. <laughs> yeah, that was part of it. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Did you pick up anything interesting in the Easter sales? I didn't even notice the Easter sales, no. Do you prefer farming games over heavy story games? Farming games? I don't play many farming games. I've kind of come to realize I enjoy colony sims. So, Stranded Alien Dawn, Oxygen Not Included, Against the Storm. I really like those titles. I also enjoy MMOs. I enjoy RPGs, which is like MMORPG, Normal RPG, Classic RPG, Action RPG. That's like Path of Exile, Diablo. I enjoy all of those. And RTSs. I like real-time strategy games. I, I'm not, like, amazing at them, but I think I'm, I'm good. Uh, and also, like, for example, StarCraft II, the campaign, stellar. I want to do a playthrough of that on stream at some point. Uh, that, like, we recently did a Warcraft 3 playthrough, which is on Mucklet Plays. I want to do a StarCraft 2 one as well. Are you going to replay V Rising after the update? Um, maybe if I was on a server that didn't have gear degradation. Last time, the reason I stopped is I got to the final boss, which was Adam. And anytime you died, it was like a 10 minute run to get back, which is annoying. And if it happened to be daytime, it was even more than that. Because if you tried to turn into a bat to fly during the daytime, you'd burn to a crisp. And if your gear broke, you would have to spend hours getting the materials to repair all your gear to do more attempts at the boss that was killing you constantly. And that's when I quit. I killed every single boss in that game except Adam because of the frustrations of like, like I don't mind dying over and over. I, on Lies of P, I fought the same guy for like six hours. So I eventually killed him, but I just want to like try again, try again, try again, try again. Not wait 10 minutes, try again, wait 10 minutes, try again. Uh, so if I was on a different type of server, uh, I might be game for it. How about an old school RTS like Command and Conquer? Dude, I just played Warcraft 3. I'd absolutely play Command and Conquer. Uh, I also pray, 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 uh, played um, Supreme Commander. That playthrough is on my uh, on Mucklick Plays as well, if you're interested in that. Yeah, I would play I play CNC. As a kid, I played Red Alert and Tiberian Sun quite a bit. Uh, Osiris says, Hello, I'm thinking about starting to play Guild Wars 2. I played WoW for a few years with Rhett, Pala, and Frost Mage. In your opinion, what would be the best choice to start with? Warrior Thief or Mesmer? I like playing some PvP solo and roaming. Hello, Osiris. Welcome. Um... Solo roaming. Honestly, Warrior Thief or Mesmer can all do that. If you want to go dip in and out of invisibility and constantly surprise people and have control of the fights, Thief probably the, be the, the best one for that. Like, Warrior, you're very fast at roaming and you could travel around a map really good, but everyone can see what you're doing. You know, it's not really sneaky. Uh, Mesmers have magic to go in and out of invisibility. Thieves can do it uh, with stealth. So you can constantly kind of, from the enemy's perspective, you're like blipping around, you're disappearing in one area, appeared in another area all over the map, which can give you a lot of control. Um, so I, I would say probably Thief or Mesmer, in my opinion. Um, as far as Red Pally, Red Pally is most similar to Guardian in this game. Frost Mage would be most similar to um, maybe a Tempest in this game, but it's it's definitely not the same. It's it's further apart than the Guardian example. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. What about story heavy heavy games like Detroit or Life is Strange? I've not played either of those. I do enjoy story games. Like I enjoy a game with a good story, but there is a balance, right? If you have a game that's just like story 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 story, and I don't get to actively do anything, I get bored. 
But if I get a game where it's just unga bunga unga bunga and I don't have any story, I'll eventually get bored of that too. I think the best games are ones that have a mixture of them, you know? Uh, when will you do the Renegade support video in case I want to backseat game you? Takizo, I might try it tonight. I'm going to have to find a guide of someone that knows how to play Renegade support now and copy it. Because I don't, like, okay, if you made changes to Druid, I could look at them and go, oh, okay, I need to do this differently to accommodate this change. But if you make a change to Renegade, I didn't know how to play Renegade before the change. So I gotta find an old guide and see if I can accommodate it for the new stuff and see how it feels. Um, so I might try it this evening and see if I can figure it out. Is Boon Herald good for tagging and metas and farming? It's very good. Because if you hit an enemy, you tag it. If you give boons to an ally that hit an enemy, it gives you credit also. So if you are providing buffs to people around you, that is also helping tag stuff. That's actually... I do not encourage this. You will get in trouble if you're caught doing it. There was, there's been a problem in the past with heralds just going AFK at certain locations, pumping out boons, and basically leeching. You know, like they would give boons to people that were fighting nearby, and then they get they get uh, credit for the kills that that people did. Uh, that's been a problem in the past in some areas of the game, and you know, don't do that. You know, don't just go AFK in a spot because you get in trouble if you get caught doing that. Uh, but that that is how the system works. That is how the system works. Uh, it's literally Ventari healer, but instead of camping Ventari, you go back and forth and then hit F2 off cooldown. Um, would it main staff? Because uh, when I did Scepter Shield, it was kind of bleh, and people were telling me you should have done staff as the main hand instead of Scepter Shield as the main hand. Mystic has one on YouTube. Mr. Mystic? Okay, I can check him later if I get there. Have you played Spellforce? The original was an RTS. I played Spellforce Conquest of EO, and I actually made a, one of the only negative review videos I've ever made was about that game. It, it was not great. Uh, but I have not played other Spellforce games. You can do whatever. Staff heals more. Scepter gives barrier. Hmm. Hmm. All the new Spellforce games are mad. I mean, I'm not opposed to trying old games, just as long as there's not something brand new that's like the hot new thing. And right now we've got Guild Wars 2, in a few days is um, Dragon's Dogma 2, and then Thursday I have an announcement about another thing that I'm going to be uh, doing, but uh, I'll tell you then. <laughs> okay, I'm just catching up on the questions, because I'm almost out of time. Yeah, I like Rev on Staff, I found out that the Staff Auto Chain has a finisher. It's like Bonk Bonk Finisher, Bonk Bonk Finisher. So if you're in like a like your your bubble field, every third auto attack is actually cleansing. Um I found that out from the YouTube comment section under my um Herald video. He's teasing hard. I'm holding back. I'm holding back. What's your guild biggest guild wars to feature copium? Mine is Diable Weapons. For me, uh, Class Balance. Also new to Guild Wars 2 coming from WoW. Your content's been a great help. I know healing is different here, but what class has the closest option to be a traditional healer in other MMOs to get started? Like a Holy Priest from WoW, White Mage from FF14, etc. With all the build options, I'm a little lost. Hello, Visade. Uh, I've actually, like, I, I love support builds, like heal builds. Those are my favorite thing. I've actually been doing a recent little, um, these are my notes. These won't make sense to most people, so don't bother, like, you know, saving this. Uh, I've been going through all the healers in the game and trying them out and seeing what I personally liked. So, when you say traditional, if you mean, like, okay, okay, hold on a sec. So, for example... This is one of my favorite healers to play. This is the Druid. When I play it, um, you know, we're going to do a quick example for our new friend here, chat, and then I'm going to have to take off. Uh, let me go in here. Uh, videos for NG aren't out yet. Correct. Uh, Scourge is the next one, and then I think Scrapper and then Mechanist. They, they've been made, but not edited. They've been recorded, but not edited. All right, so uh, for our new friend here, hang on. So Spawn Golem, Average. This is just a testing room where you can practice. Okay. And adjust environment, turn on damage. Okay, that red area does damage, okay? So if I stand in this, you notice I'm getting hit every second. All right, so I'm going to run in here, and I'm going to do mace two, which does a slam on the ground. Notice that healed me. You see those green numbers? All right. And then I'll do, like, some warhorn skills, which basically just, like, does buffs on the surrounding area. And then this is avatar form. 
This is kind of like if you're if you're using that WoW comparison. Uh, do you remember the patches where tree form was like an emergent, well, not an emergency button, but a longer cooldown for resto druids? It's similar to that in this game. Astral form has a cooldown, so you go into it and you're like a giga healer, and you go back out of it. You're still doing healing while in this form, but it's uh, it's different. So I can, I'm still surviving this damage aura, but in this form, the the healing is absolutely massive. So. There are certain things, like you notice right now there's green numbers. That's regeneration. Regeneration is a buff that almost every healer in the game can provide. So you do have, um, like in traditional MMOs, you've got like some healers that will specialize and heal over time. When I played World of Warcraft, the Resto Druids had you know restoration and regrowth and rejuvenation. They had lots of different heal over time spells. Uh, this game, um, every almost everyone has access to regeneration. Uh, but then there's also the Tempest has an extra heal over time effect. So they have two. So they, they have more. What do blue numbers mean? Um, if you mean like that, that is a barrier. My maximum health was temporarily increased. So that's my health. And then there's a temporary bonus hit points. Okay. So that's, that's what that is. And that's only barrier. Like I have one emergency button that does that on Druid. Scourge excels at that. So if you liked Discipline Priest, you know what? Hold on a sec. Where is my notepad? Okay, hold on a sec. All right. All right, healers. Okay. Barrier healers. Gives temporary bonus HP to block damage. All right. You've got Spectre, which is Thief. Uh, Scourge, which is Necro. Uh, Mechanist which is NG, Engineer. Um, I would say uh, Scourge or Mechanist are much easier to play than Spectre. Then you've got uh, Heal Over Time focused, uh, focused healers. Um, nearly every heal... Uh, I cannot type, oh my gosh. Nearly every healer can provide regeneration. Uh, Tempest also has Soothing Mist, which is a second heal over time. Okay. Um, big single target heal healer. Um, most of the heals in this game target an area. So, for example, if I'm in this taking damage, I can use this skill and in this case, it's a movement skill, but I move to that spot and emit a heal. Or this one, slam a huge heal in this area. So most of them are targeting a spot on the ground, or they emit from you. This one emits from me. So most heals are not single target. Most heals are pick a location, and you bomb that area with healing magic. So there's a few exceptions. The uh, fire, you know, say let's say most healers heal around themselves or with a targeting, uh, targeting reticle, uh, the circle. Firebrand, guardian, is an exception. It makes heavy use of conal abilities. So like abilities that fire in a cone in front of you. So if you've got a Firebrand healing you and you keep stepping to the side or stepping behind him, he's going to get pissed. <laughs> because he, like, if there's a whole group of people together, the Firebrand will, might, will take one step back to hit all of them with his cone of buffs and magic and stuff. But if, the, if they keep, some guy keeps leaving the group, the Firebrand's going to get mad at him because he can't hit him with his skills. <laughs> but, like, that's most of them. Like, that, that is most of them. And again, it's like, for example, when I hit something with this, like, uh, nature, nature mace thing. It's just anyone near me when I bash with this mace skill gets a heal. All right, so that's that. That just happens around me. Uh, when I put this on someone, just anything around them gets a heal. This is this area. This is this area. This is this area. This is this area. This is around me. This one is in an area, but I can throw it if I need to save someone far away. Um, so it's that that's generally how the game works. The only class that makes heavy use of targeting the ally is Spectre. And I'm going to be honest, in my opinion, it feels bad because this game was not really built for targeted healing. 
and they tried to kind of shoehorn it in with Spectre, and it feels kind of rough to use because you don't have all the same add-ons and stuff you have from World of Warcraft, like mouse over macros, where like you're in a group and you can just mouse over someone and fire a heal, mouse over someone, fire a heal. Now you've got to like click, heal, click, heal, click, heal, click, cl click, heal. You know, you, you've got to like, you know, hunt them down. And uh, it's it's just, it wasn't really designed for that, so it feels weird. They need a, yeah, they need a UI update for ally targeting to work. I, I I do believe that. Mace two is neat since you can use it like a set and forget if you got to move. Yeah, like hunt and pack diaper. Yes, I understand your reference, Ozzy. I'm not reading that. Um, I usually read the patch notes together with the skill icons, etc. So Seiko, you, uh, sometimes when I read the patch notes, they are not yet on the uh, wiki, which means the ones with the icons aren't available yet. But sometimes I do. Do I think Vindicator could ever work as a healer, even though it can't give quickness or lacrity? Vindicator is already a great healer in PvP and World v. World, but in PvE, to, to really drive this point home, when you're in PvE, if you have all the buffs in the game that you can have, you will do, like, triple your normal damage, okay? Like, okay, look, there's an empty bar right here, all right? Let me show you something. All right, do you see these buffs? Like, this is all stuff that your normal healer would be providing you, okay? The Vindicator does not provide some of the most essential ones. So if you have a normal, okay, let's say normal group is healer that provides quickness or alacrity, one DPS that provides the other one three more DPS, okay? If you have Vindicator Healer, you need one DPS that provides Quickness, one DPS that provides Alacrity, and then you only have two DPS slots open. You've gone from three DPS to two. That is a substantial loss in damage for your group, all because the Vindicator could not provide the buffs. So before that reason, the Vindicator is great at filling low health health bars back up. It's just the buffing he sucks at. So the Vindicator is great in PvP or World v. World where buffing isn't as big of a thing. Um, but in PvE, it's just not going to happen at this time. Unless that changes. No, uh, Yeah, it's Notepad++. I mainly use it. Like It has a ton of features, guys. I mainly use this just because of the dark background so I don't blind you as much. <laughs> That's the main reason I use it as a streamer. <laughs> um, let's see. Chat, uh, uh, simple video, don't do times as well. How many uh, hours from now is the normal evening stream? Five hours. Uh, could we finally disable Bloom only in graphics options? Yes. If you go to graphics options, Bloom is right there. I haven't tested it, but it's there now. All right. Chat. It's time. I got, I got to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for a wonderful morning stream. I truly hope you guys enjoyed it. I uh, had a lot of fun here with you all. If you happen to be new, be sure to hit that follow button on Twitch or like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. I need to step away. Um, if you don't know me, uh, I am Muckluck. I stream every single day. These are my YouTube channels. I'm putting them in the chats if you would like to follow me on both of those or subscribe on both of those. And a special thank you to the dear patrons. They keep this channel alive. They're the reason I'm able to keep making videos and stuff for you guys. So check that out if you are interested. Uh, with that, I am going to find someone to raid just to show some support to another one of the streamers on the Twitch side. Uh, oh, perfect. Noxie's live. All right, here we go. I'll raid Noxie, my wonderful editor that uh, edits all the videos for me and puts those memes in there. So I'll see you all on the, on the other side. And I'm going to end the streams here and I'll be back in five hours on the NA servers if you wish to join me then. Y'all have a great rest of your day.